Are you ready to rewind? Take a nostalgia-filled ride back to a simpler time. It's Acid Wash Memories, a retro pop culture celebration. And now your hosts, Joe Morata and Michael Quinn. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number seven of Acid Washed Memories, a retro pop culture celebration. Today, we're taking you to Lanford because we're talking about Roseanne. My name is Joe Murata. I'm joined, of course, by the Lobos' favorite, Michael Quinn. How you doing there, Michael? hey yo. hey yo. It's uh, Roseanne. It's one of my Roseanne favorites. time. One of my favorites, too. And folks, uh, maybe you're not a fan of Roseanne. We encourage you to stick with us here. Or I think that's why we're doing this, right? It's like trying to because, enlighten people. Yeah, I see a lot of this online. Oh, she's rude, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I want this to be a celebration. Yes. And we're going to... We're going to really show you guys that Roseanne is good. We're going to try to show you that Roseanne is good, and hopefully you think that we're good if you've never heard of us before. we got other episodes in our archive. You can check it out, but we thank you for being with us here. You can follow us on Twitter if you have Twitter at AWM Podcast and uh, tweet at us there about the show, about anything that you want, yeah. really. And you can also join our Facebook discussion group. It's a friendly group of folks over there. So friendly. It honestly is. There's like no drama or anything. Everyone's just posting their happy memories yep. about stuff. It's a lot of fun. Uh, that's just Acid Washed Memories on Facebook. And if you like what you hear, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast application. We'd really appreciate that. So we're talking about Roseanne, the first of our TV show deep dives we plan on doing yes. throughout the life of this so show. I, I feel like we've hit a, a pivotal point in the history of acid wash memories yes. in general. Storied history. Finally, a deep dive into one topic and one that is close to our hearts, Roseanne. Roseanne. So Roseanne was on from October of 1988 until May of 1997 and then a revival from March until May of 2018. Me and my husband just found a foolproof method of birth control. Every night before we go to bed, we spend an hour with our kids. Many of you have probably seen it, at mm-hmm. least casually, at least in yeah. passing, because it was a very popular show. Some of you might be diehard fans, and some of you maybe can't stand the show. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. You might never like it, but we do hope that after you listen to this, you'll at least understand a bit more yeah. why we like it so much and, and why it was so popular. And maybe some of you who, you know, wrote it off in the 90s as that mean lady. The mean lady. The yeah. mean lady. That sang the Star Spangled maybe, Banner. Maybe you might give it a second shot going through here, kind of recapping and having memories, fond memories of this great television show. Finally, a real mother comes to television. Roseanne premieres next. You know, for a show that started in 1988, I don't want to necessarily call it groundbreaking, but it was definitely fresh compared to the other family-oriented sitcoms. Yes, I mean, when this show came on, it was the height of Cosby, family television. Yeah, Growing Um, Pains was on. You know, always a positive message. Family ties. Family ties, that kind of thing. Full House was on already. Yeah, all those, the Miller Boy at Beauties were starting (laughs) up. Exactly. That was the mode that 8 o'clock to around 10-ish every night was set in. Especially on ABC. Especially on ABC, but even like NBC, CBS. The Cosby Show, yeah. Fox to a certain extent, which although they were kind of making fun of it a little bit, they were starting that up too. Well, and they had Married with Children a year prior to this, which is almost a cartoon. Yeah, Married with Children is more a parody than it is a... A program with a serious actual story going on or anything. Like, it's not like I love Married with Children for what it is, but it's almost designed to be like almost surreal and weird. Farcical. Like, yeah, it kind of knows that and it's saying that to its audience. It's not not trying to be some serious thing. Right. And the reason I bring that show up is because a lot of people tend, maybe that are unfamiliar, tend to lump Roseanne into that same kind of trash TV category. See, that's the deceptive part about Roseanne to me is that. From the onset, it had a reputation. I think it's partially ABC's marketing. Oh, how they, definitely. How they, perce- they put it out there. She's Donna Reed. What did I tell you about killing your brother in the living room? June Cleaver. Yeah, I looked in the mirror and I'm getting boobs. And Harriet Nelson. This is why some animals eat their young. <laughs> Rolled into one. But also, Roseanne Barr, who she was before the show started, the comedian... Her kind of raunchy, yeah. pissed off mom Crass. humor, like that kind of thing. In your face. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because Roseanne obviously is the central figure of Roseanne. Right. right? Roseanne Barr, the comedian. She started doing stand up in 1980. And by 85, she was on The Tonight Show, which, as anyone that's familiar with Johnny Carson's Tonight Show uh, from the 60s through even the early 90s, would know that that could be a make or break. 
I never get out of the house. I stay home all the time. I never do anything fun because I'm a housewife. And it was a make here. It was a make for her. So she got another appearance on The Tonight Show. She did Letterman. She got her own HBO special in 1987. Right. She turned down the role of Peg Bundy. Huh. You know, knowing Roseanne, she was her own act. She yes. She wanted to be the lead. She didn't want to play second fiddle to right. Al Bundy over there. Exactly. And Roseanne's act, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's not quite what she adopted for the sitcom, but it's similar in the sense that her whole persona was that of the, as she called it, the domestic goddess, meaning a housewife. And she portrayed this put-upon, burdened housewife. Right. In a, like a comical way. In a, co- in a For laughs, yeah. I hate that word, housewife. I prefer to be called domestic goddess. <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty unique. It was pretty fresh. Again, I don't want to overstate this and say she was groundbreaking and nothing had ever been like this before. But at the time, I think there was, I mean, I'm not a lady and I'm not a lady from the 1980s, but I would say that first, but I would say that ladies maybe want this was stuff that they, you know, maybe they had thoughts about or like what Roseanne was doing was throwing it all out there. They had a voice. They had a voice and, and, and she was appreciated for that. And it was almost like, yeah, be obnoxious. Tell them what it's really like. A lot of stuff bugs me about being married, you know, like having a husband and stuff. <laughs> Let's move over to Carsey and Warner, Marcy Carsey and Tom Warner, who were a producing duo, most notably responsible for The Cosby Show. Right. And it's been off a different world. And later, Grace Under Fire, Third Rock from the Sun, That 70s Show. Right. So Carsey and Warner were looking to get kind of a, in their words, a no perks family comedy on television, meaning very blue collar, gritty, realistic. And and that's the other component to the background of Roseanne is that most television shows at the time was a suburban middle class, firmly middle class family. We're not, no danger of not having money. Right, like the Tanner family. Not rich, but just no danger of going homeless or paying the bills or anything like that. The Seavers. Yeah. You know? So what they did is they hired Matt Williams, who was a writer for The Cosby Show, to help develop this show. Uh, And Matt Williams actually would later go on to be one of the creators of Home Improvement, another ABC juggernaut. Yes. So he did know his sitcoms. So we get this show developed here in 1987, and casting happens, and we get into 1988. And it is in October of 1988 when the pilot, which also counts as episode one, like yes. proper in their canon, when that debuts. So let's meet our cast here. The cast is so important in this show. It is. The cast and their characters. Correct. Are important. So this is everyone that we meet in season one as far as the primary cast. And what we're going to do right now, folks, is we're going to walk you through season by season mm-hmm. some of the things that happen in each season, some of the new faces that we'll meet, some of the big developments, and maybe some episodes that, if you haven't watched Roseanne in a long time, or maybe you've never watched it. These are some episodes to check out. So in season one, we obviously meet Roseanne Connor. This is why some animals eat their young. <laughs> the matriarch, she works at a plastics factory. At yeah, Wellman. Wellman. 35 years old when the series starts. And she is not only a full-time housewife, but also a full-time factory worker. Yes. It, that's it's, the crux of the first season. It's realistic. Right. That's how people do it. They work a full-time job. The husband works a full-time job, and that's just how they go. Yep. And her Welcome hu- to the real world. <laughs> and her husband was played by John Goodman, who I could Whew. go on for hours about him just as an actor, not even as Dan Connor. But- yes, Dan Connor, the, the, the husband, a interesting man, a guy who you might perceive as a bruiser or, or a, a drunk or, or something based on you know his habits. But there's a lot more to him. He's much deeper. He's right? the emotional core of that show. Right. He really is. Mm-hmm. He, he's the anchor in a lot of ways of that show. Dan Connor, 36, by the way, and just setting the ages for you here. So they're like around our age, right? Right. I can't stand it when people leave toast crumbs on the butter. Well, what difference does it make? You're just going to smear it on your toe. It ain't right. <laughs> you don't like it when people leave jelly in a peanut butter jar. Well, that's sickening. <laughs> and John Goodman wasn't what you'd call famous by this point. He had been, I guess, most notably to this point, besides commercials, he did a lot of commercials, he was in the Coen Brothers film Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage. Right. Everybody freeze. Everybody down on the ground. Well, which is it, young feller? You want I should freeze or get down on the ground? Mean to say, if I freeze, I can't rightly drop. And if I drop, I'm going to be in motion. 
You see? Shut up! Back then, even, I don't know by the general public, but it seems within the industry, he was a respected yes. actor. Within the industry, like he, he was. was not, you know, not a big star yet, no. but he was on people's radars. People knew who the hell John Goodman was. Big guy, 6'3", probably clocking in over 300 pounds. But I think the important part is, like, he had that look, but I, I love the juxtaposition of how deep John Goodman is as yes. an actor. And initially, I mean, really, these first five, six seasons of Roseanne... Dan Connor's character is a perfect foil to Roseanne because she does respect him, right. even though she's brash and loudmouth, but he is also extremely goofy and childlike at points and yes. very funny and just fun. He seems like a real dad. Yes, he seems real. I am the best. You're the worst. I am the drywall master of the universe. Ah! <laughs> They're perfectly balanced. I think that is what the like diamond in the rough factor about Roseanne and Dan as parents is. Yes. Is that the concept of the show is that from the outside, they look like, as even they will say, white trash. Right. Right. That's the running joke. But when you're in the home, you realize that this is a pretty tight ship in here. These parents don't mess around. They're very involved in their kids' lives. I think one of the reasons, too, and yes, we are going to get to the seasons, but I think one of the reasons, too, that this might have been off-putting or maybe shocking to people is because you didn't hear families on TV talking like this. Yes. But in real life, this is how people talk. Yes, they had a very sarcastic tone. But it wasn't just that the parents were sarcastic to the kids. The kids would give it right back at them. Right. And they all had a push-pull dynamic going on. Exactly. So let's meet the kids. So we had Becky Connor, the oldest of the Connors. She was 13. Is this supposed to be dinner? No, this is the cocktail hour before dinner. <laughs> she was played by an unknown actress really to that point, Lacey Goranson. Mm -hmm. And Becky is, when the show starts, you know, we're talking season one, she's kind of trying to be popular. She wants to be a prima donna, but she's sort of ashamed that she comes from... From this family. From, well, again, as they are perceived as the white trash family, but they kind of like, like I like to say that, you yeah. know, in the house, they really aren't. No, they're really not. They're regular yeah. people. Right. She's also very smart academically. She does very well. So she's portrayed as pretty much your stereotypical normal. Kind of the golden child. Golden child. Yeah. yeah. Now her younger sister, the middle child, Darlene, who was 11 when the show starts. She's now at the beginning of the show, Darlene is a tomboy. She's 100% she's a tomboy. She's dad's best friend. Not even daddy's girl. Dad, like, no. Be like, best play friend. Baseball. Basketball. Like, baseball. Sorts of stuff. They yeah. watch sports together. Yeah. Dad, I struck out Mark Winstead six times. Yeah, I saw that in the sports page. <laughs> yeah. She's portrayed by Sarah Gilbert, who you all know now, I'm sure, because she did go on to have a pretty impressive career. Uh, she is the, for those wondering, the adopted sister of Melissa Gilbert of Little House on the Prairie fame. Ah, I didn't know that. Yep. But Darlene, yes, like Quinn said, is the tomboy, dad's best friend, dad's buddy, basically, yeah. right? And then DJ, David Jacob, Connor, for the record, who's six or seven, the character's age when I the show starts. I almost love DJ in a way because he's, he's silent, but he's kind of like the goof of the family. Yeah. He's the little one. He's the, innocent at first. He's innocent at first, but Darlene always has a problem with him, yep. even though he kind of doesn't really do anything. He do, That's not abnormal for a, a little kid. He's right? very much played as a normal kid that yeah. the parents seem to overlook on occasion, but yeah. he's there, you yeah. know, and they care about him. He's played in the pilot only by a kid named Sal Barone, who was recast after the pilot. How long did that live? This, just the pilot? Just the pilot. Yeah, I, I remember it's Michael Fishman all the way it through. It is Michael Fishman, who really, again, wasn't an actor. Yeah. Daddy's in big trouble, isn't she? You'd love that, wouldn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> So those are the people that live in the house, but in the house very often. <laughs> this is this is a very <laughs> this is one of the most important characters in the show. This would be, of course, Roseanne's sister, Jackie Harris. Yes, Aunt 32. Jackie. Yep, Aunt Jackie. Aunt, Aunt Jackie always in the house, always has some weird job yep, eating always, their food. Always like, doing laundry there. Yeah. You know what your problem is? Besides you, your problem is that you and Dan don't know how to manage your money, and that's why you're always broke. That's Laurie Metcalf, who it might be one of the more famous people to come out of this besides you know, John Goodman. I would argue that Laurie Metcalf might have been the most accomplished actress on this show. What? With prior experience, yes. stage and film and TV. She uh, she carved out a hell of a niche as a, a character actor, a supporting actress. She was in Desperately Seeking Susan. She was in a lot of yeah. things. She was in Desperate Housewives yeah. also. She won multiple Emmys. So you probably pr you know who Laurie Metcalf is. She's also uh, Billy's mom in Scream too. I'm very sane. My motive isn't as 90s as Mickey's. 
Mine is just good old-fashioned revenge. Also uh, in the main cast in season one is Natalie West as Crystal, who is a friend of Roseanne and Jackie's. Yeah, now in the first, like the first couple seasons, Crystal's like it's like the three amigos yeah. for Roseanne and Jackie, yep. right? And like she, they're they're top friends. Yep, she's a family friend, so she's there a bit, and she factors in. I give anything to have a man like Dan. He stays home. He never runs around on you. He's good to the kids, and he's hygienic. <laughs> So let's finally get in now that we've established the characters to season one. And I'm just going to go over some bullet points here, folks. Again, this is not a comp. I have trusted Joe to pick the bullet points here. (laughs) We can't go through every episode of every season. We'd be here for days and you guys don't want that. But at the same time, this is a deep dive. So we'll get into it. We're going to get into it. So season one debuted, like we said, October of 1988. And the theme song, Quinn, which will change throughout. It's very important. This is the calm, chill version, right? Like, it's just very, it's very calm. The first season, actually, it's interesting, that theme song. It's very different than what was on TV around this time. It's very chill. It's chill, but it's also, like, folksy. It feels, and, yeah, it yeah. feels folksy and, and down to earth and working class. It fits the show. The openings of Roseanne are iconic to me. Yeah. Because it's just a pan show, well, like a dolly shot around the table. Yeah. And, and the season one, I love it. They're just... They're not doing anything in particular. They're just like eating pizza or something. No, they're not even. They're just screwing around. Oh, that's around. later. They're yeah. all just sitting around the table doing whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I love about that opening, too, by the way? If you've never seen Roseanne, you watch that opening, you know every single character within two seconds because they're so expressive and candid in the opening. You're yep. like, oh, that's Roseanne. Oh, that's DJ. Oh, that's yep. Becky. And you go around the table. Yeah. And like It's better than the usual like a picture of them <laughs> on a windowsill or, or whatever. staring off into the distance after walking down the stairs. Yeah, it's like, no, they're like animated they're and doing out. things, right? I love yeah. it. They're just hanging out, right. being a family. Obviously, the song always ends with Roseanne's iconic laugh. <laughs> So season one, some of the plot points is uh, Roseanne, Jackie, and Crystal and others work at Wellman Plastics. Wellman like Plastics, said. and I, I, if a factory well, memory, it's it's always some like oh, Wellman's cutting our pay or Wellman's oh, it doing this. Sucks. It, Wellman sucks ass. Like fuck Wellman. It's a shitty manual labor job right. where they make plastics and do plastic things. But their boss Booker would go on to fame. It's George Clooney. Yes. So this is very <laughs> weird. A lot of people just completely forget this but George Clooney is he's like the cool guy boss yeah he's and then nice sometimes he has to deliver the bad huh? news and he doesn't want to and he's like I'm trying Ro-, like he yeah. calls her Rosie and stuff yeah. like like he's like the friend boss yeah I gotta get off an hour early today uh, no, I can't do it we're 200 cases behind on that Gilman order but I got a booker it is really really important you have to understand my position he eventually dates Jackie. He like even hangs out with them after work. Like he doesn't he play poker with Dan and shit. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now Dan is a contractor. He owns his own contracting company. He does drywall and things. It's Four Aces Construction. At this point, Roseanne and Dan have been married for fifteen years. I'm saying that just so you have a feel for where this show comes from. They're not newlyweds. They've yeah. been together a long time. And a lot of the episodes in this season are centered around everyday life things, parenting, parenting work things with the kids just like very simple blue collar mentality yeah nothing fancy right but i think what the first season does so well is there's a lot of episodes that half the episode is just dan and roseanne fucking around in the kitchen or doing something there's a lot of light-hearted just goofing on each other like yeah like so much fun like throwing like loving insults at each other like and like are you ever sorry we got married Every second of my life. <laughs> Me too. You are really? <laughs> nah. Okay, me neither then. Real shit, right? Real just like the way people talk to each other, you right. know? Like, for example, the pilot episode, Darlene's been barking in class. Mm-hmm. So Roseanne tries to get an hour off of work early. She can't. And Dan can't go to the school to meet with the teacher because Dan said that he's going to bid on a job, right? So Roseanne can only get a half hour off, according to Booker. She goes to the school. She's late. She has to talk the teacher in a meeting with her, blah, blah, blah. Turns out Dan had all the free time because he didn't get the job. And that's the crux of their argument. But again, these are just very minor things, like a slice of someone's life. You know what I mean? Like, doesn't that just sound like something that might have happened in your life? Right. 
or if you were a kid, doesn't it sound like something your parents might have went through? Right. This isn't high concept right here, and that's yeah. the difference. The, the setting isn't a bar. It's not a taxi stand. Yes. It's not a courtroom. But what makes it so interesting to me is, oh my God, the depth that the characters build so early on. Yeah. You feel like, because they mention their their past that you don't see, like, you know, Dan played football yeah, in high school. Yeah, they went to high school together. Yeah, and right. like, you know, Roseanne and Jackie were, you know, partners in crime and their mother was weird and yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yes. like, and that kind of thing. And it was just, within a very short amount of time, I feel like I know everything about these people. And that's a credit to the writing and it's a credit to the acting. You and know? I think it's important because as the later seasons go by, pivotal things happen in their life that matter, but it's built on this basis of like, we really know things about Dan, Dan and Roseanne and, yep. and Jackie and, yeah, and, and the kids and the kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like Becky gets her first boyfriend, Chip, yes, in, during Chip. this season. Uh, Chip, who's like, like very much like an 80s kid. Yeah. Yes. Like very. He could but be. His parents are a little. They have a little more money. They're a little bougie, as you yeah. would say, Quinn. Yeah. You know, there's a very funny scene where they come and the Connors are hospitable, by the way. They, they are. They are nice people. It's, yeah. And I want to get this, you know, because this is a lot of the first season too. This is, I think, the season where it got that reputation of, oh, I don't like that lady. She's mean or whatever. She's not but really. But if you watch the show for, like, more than five fucking minutes, once they get past the, the like, funny ribbing at the beginning right. of, like, every episode, yeah, right. they, it always turns into this, like, wow, Roseanne really loves her kids. Like, there's this episode in the first season, I swear, maybe it's the second, I don't know, but it's, like, one of these where, like, DJ's feeling a little like mom doesn't care about oh, him yeah. and like there's just like a heartfelt moment yes. at the end where she sits down with him and and like really just treats him like a little kid yeah, like you know really like sweet. a mother yeah. I know exactly what you mean and she's portrayed as a realistic mother she of course she loves her youngest little son right and she, of course she has to you know ramp up the sarcasm to deal with her two older ones because they're being sarcastic they need it I need to fix my truck what happened to it the wheel fell off. And give it to me. You know how to fix trucks. I know how to do anything. I'm a mom. Dad's just supposed to fix trucks. Give me that. Let's go sit down here. You know, over that first season, you're like, this is a really good person. She really does care about her kids. She's not this white trash lady no. that everyone thinks she is. They have morals. Yeah. And they're hospitable. Like with Chip's parents, you know, they invite them over and he offers them a drink. What the heck? I'll have a tropical hurricane. <laughs> I can get you a cold beer and turn on a fan. And it's just that type of funny, simple humor. Yeah. Uh, we also meet in the first season, and more on these people later, Bev and Al Harris. Now, those are Roseanne now, and Jackie's parents. Al Harris. John he, Randolph, by the so, way. So, okay. This character is here for like five fucking seconds. Yes, like, you only see him like once or twice. Yes, because and, well, Bev well, is the focus yes. of intense resentment, anger, yes. and hostility from the kids. That's Estelle from, Parsons. Yes. Yes. Ma, why didn't you call? I did, but your line was busy. Then I tried your sister. I couldn't get a hold of her. I thought maybe something was wrong, but of course, if there were, God knows she would never tell me. John Randolph, by the way, was notable later, I guess, amongst sitcom fans for being the first Frank Costanza before they retcon yes. that and, and it was always Jerry Stiller. But anyway, there's also a running joke in this first uh, season where every episode mentions corn. The word corn is said in every episode. I never even knew that. that that's a little trivia bit, J isn't just it? Just Roseanne being funny. Don't touch that cream corn. Now, notable episodes that you might want to check out to get a good feel for this. Uh, the pilot, obviously. Yeah. There's also one where Dan writes a song for a radio contest, and it's like actually good. It's based on Roseanne's uh, poem, and they don't win. <laughs> yeah, it that doesn't that, win. That's a Roseanne ending. Yeah, yeah, for you. There's also a bizarre one, but I always kind of liked it, where a tornado comes through Lanford. We got to hang on. We got to mention Lanford. It's a fictional yes. suburb of Illinois. It's an important part of this yes. show because Lanford, it's the butt of jokes. But it's also like it's seemingly like a tight knit community where a lot yeah. of people know each Everybody other. Everybody knows each and other. Everyone grew up going to high school together like, as well. It's like the town that I live in. Right. It's like the town I grew up in. It's like a lot of people's towns. And uh, Lanford's geography is vague. It actually, where they reference it, it kind of moves throughout the years. It's, it's not real. But it's actually based on Evansville, Indiana, oh, really? uh, which is where Matt Williams is from. And Evansville, Indiana is right at the southern tip of Indiana. So it's really, 
it could fit right in anywhere there in that part of middle America. They imply that Chicago is with like their closest city. It's like two city. hours away yeah, or something. Yeah. But they also mention Elgin and DeKalb, so you never really know where they are, right. if that makes sense. But anyway, there's this one time where a tornado comes through Lanford, and that's all the episode is about. Is them just like covering covering uh, yeah. yeah like dan's like can't wait to see it he's like obsessed with it yeah and then it comes and like roseanne has to grab dj away from the window and then they hide basically yeah. behind the chair then it happens and then everything's fine there's that's one how, that's how shit goes just like real life uh and then there's dan's birthday and i know you like this one where they're hanging out at the lobo lounge which is their local bar everyone yes. knows who they are the lobo so right? the lobo is another landmark of lanford the, if you will the local watering hole basically right. of lanford it's in many episodes it's in a lot of episodes <laughs> dan gets into an incident with this uh, big guy i don't think you get it pal you want this table you got to get past me well that's fine hell i got 10 seconds to stay. hey dan knock it off shut up roseanne dan walks away doesn't fight him Throughout this episode, there's implications of like Dan feels like he's getting older yeah. and he and he wants to prove that he's not an old guy. Yep. And throughout the show at this point, there's been, you know, Dan was a brawler and he, you know, he he was a big guy and he could really stand up for himself. And he was a football and player to, and nobody's gonna take away his pride or and whatever. He used to right? get into fights all the time. Right. And, you know, he just didn't care it, but this was before he had kids. And Correct. that's the implication. Exactly. So he doesn't fight the guy. At the end of the episode, Dan and Roseanne are there. And who walks in but the beer hat man? Hey, it's Mr. Tough Guy. <laughs> hey, listen, tell me something, because I got to know. What do you and your fat wife think of my new hat? And Dan looks at Roseanne, like, with a, a longing face. Like, can I? Yeah, and like, she's like, oh, just this once. Yeah. Just this once. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it, run. It's, it's good. <laughs> it's very good. It is good. So uh, that's a that's a fun episode. And but then, this, this to me that also sowed the seeds for later things about Dan having a past of being a, a bit of a brawler. Yes, uh, I, like it really did because it's used much throughout the series as a, as yes. a flashpoint of you don't want to upset the bear. Right. But also the bears like fucking Shakespeare or something at right. the same time. Like, you <laughs> yes. know, he, he's like very deep. And John Goodman portrays it realistically. Yeah. It's totally believable. Right. So the season ends with the Wellman walkout. So Booker is fired and the new boss in his place, Fred Thompson, who later went on to become a politician. You've probably heard of Fred Thompson. Mm -hmm. He takes over and um, raises the quotas that the girls have to make, you know, their output to unachievable levels. Roseanne cuts a deal with him. But then he keeps the quotas the same. You sound angry, Roseanne. You told me if I told the line that you dropped the quotas. Why are you doing this? Because I can. No, you can't. I did. And when I broke you, I knew you were just like the rest of them. He's an asshole. Like, he really is a jerk. If I recall, that scene with Roseanne begging for the quotas is pretty tense. It is. And the fact that he just fucks her over. Yep. It hurts to watch. Like, from a perspective of, like, because Roseanne, like, put aside any, you know, being sarcastic. She really, like, she went to bat tried, yeah. and said, like, you know, we'll, we'll do what you we'll do what you need. Like, you know, yep. I, I, I don't want to argue with you, that kind of thing. And he just fucks them over. So she leads a walkout. Yeah. She leaves. Jackie leaves. Crystal leaves. And the other some of the other ladies that work there, they leave. And that's how the season ends. Roseanne work, walking out of a shitty job. And you know what? There's probably a lot of relatability there. People have walked out of <laughs> shitty jobs. Right. And again, just just talking about why this show came across so different is not because there hadn't been television shows where people did insult comedy, because of course there had been. You ever watch the Jeffersons? You yeah. know what I mean? You ever hear George Jefferson talk or yeah. Archie Bunker or yeah. the Golden Girls? It's the fact that they're it's a family show. It's a family show breaking that mold. And it right. it has the stakes of, hey, rents due or, or yes. the mortgage is due or we got to put clothes on the kids yes. and like it be it's domestic but it feels high stakes because this family could go poor and be broke at any second at any right? given time right? right and that's actually the the main crux of the first several years of the show is using humor as a way to deal with the harsh realities of life i mean that's right. really 
a lot of people related to the show, so much so that it was number two in the ratings for its debut yeah. season. Yeah. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Number two for a brand new show. Yes, it, it, it was It was great. It's a credit to everyone involved. So season, Well acted. Extremely well acted, and it does get better from there. Yes. Season two picks up in 1989, of course. Uh, uses the same intro for those of you keeping track. Same intro. The, the tempo has not moved. Nope, and yet. neither have... It's the same exact intro. Uh, now, Roseanne, throughout this season, we'll get to them in detail a little bit, has various jobs. Uh, she's briefly like a telemarketer from home. You see her doing that throughout some of the episodes. Mm-hmm. She works briefly as a bartender at the Lobo. Right. Which, again, you know, if you ever know someone that can get you a job for a little bit, you do it. Right. It, this is just real life shit. Is that my head or do you want something? I could use another. What, another liver? <laughs> There's the, the fast food chicken place, which we'll get to, uh, where she works as a cashier there. And finally, she ends the season working at a salon as like the basically the hair sweeper, you know, like shampoo yeah. girl or whatever. Right. Roseanne, have you made up your mind about this job yet? Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> well, of course you hate it, honey, but are you going to stay with us? So she has a bunch of different jobs, but Jackie takes on a whole different uh, tack. She becomes a cop. Yes. So this whole Jackie is a cop thing is very interesting because it's such a I feel like it's such a juxtaposition to what Roseanne's doing. Right. Roseanne's like job to job struggling. Doing and Jackie's kind of got and- this solid job and, and she, <laughs> she she has this self-esteem, but, you know, she doesn't. Right. Kind of thing going on. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm a cop now. I'm in poor. It's very like, funny. Yeah. And, and it's it's fine dynamic because Roseanne's supposed to be the boss. You know what's real easy to pronounce, Mrs. Wellman? Cop. (laughs) Because that's what I am. I'm a cop. And I'm here investigating an accident in which a person was injured. Does this dog have a license? But she stays relatively grounded. You know, right. she's she's more goofy, but she stays grounded. She yeah. meets Gary, who she really loves. And they actually wind up getting engaged, but then they call off the engagement and just stay together for a while. Right. Nice boyfriend, though. Like, she's very happy with Gary. There's nothing wrong Gary. with this Gary fella, but Gary is not. It's because he's plain. I feel like they just didn't. They were like, we can't. Like, yeah. the writers, I mean. Like, they're like, Jackie's got to be doing something else. Like, But he gets along with Dan. He gets along with Roseanne. Right. You know, he's a nice guy. By the way, a, a theme in this show is if you end up at Dan's poker table, you're like friend yes. of, of the, the family. Like right? Chucky and all that. It's yeah, a there's... recurring thing. And it's it's a lot more recurring than I remember when I go back and watch a show. I'm like, man, Dan's poker table is like every other fucking episode there's a lot of episodes yeah and one of the people we meet at the poker table for the first time is arnie thomas yes uh, who's arnie. <laughs> played by tom arnold roseanne's Ros- at, roseanne's real life husband at that at, time yeah at, at, time. at the time arnie are you here to play poker or walk laps okay you're right i'll just go flirt with rose now arnie is kind of retconned into being somebody that they've always known but he's he was, so annoying yeah the whole point of him is he's extremely annoying and nobody really likes him. Like, Dan tolerates him. It's just kind of like we knew this guy, which is, again, a very real life. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's some guy we went to school with. Right. And I don't know. He he still lives here. He, you know, why not? He's right? fine. Yeah, he's fine. Whatever. He seems like a nice guy. <laughs> Small doses or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Crystal begins a romance uh, with somebody that Dan has a hard time with. His dad, Ed Connor, Ned yes. Beatty. What are you doing, Dad? What do you mean? Why don't you just leave Crystal alone? Why? Because I asked you to. You got something going on with her? Is that supposed to be funny? This is some of the good acting we're getting into, right? Yes. So, okay, this whole Crystal, first of all, if I recall, is afraid to tell Dan about this. Yes. Right? She's kind of doing this secretly. Dan and his dad don't get along. Right. Dan and his dad, notoriously, there's a backstory that has been it's just touched upon. It's not yeah. really said. But his dad's a traveling salesman that yeah. basically comes by. He's nice to the kids, but Dan Dan thinks that he sees through it all. Right. Is basically the crux. Yes. And Dan is resentful because as a father, he would you know come home and pretend to be Mr. Dad and then just fucking leave for Correct. like months. So he falls in love with Crystal, though. Yeah, he falls in love with Crystal. Now, Crystal, on the other hand, is in a situation where she's really looking for stability. She has a kid from a previous marriage. And what she yeah, what she desires really is an older gentleman who will 
actually take care of. Correct. But Dan sees this once he once he's alerted to the situation. <laughs> Dan sees this as this is the worst fucking person. Like he right. literally doesn't do that. But we start to get hints that his dad is reformed. I, there's even a scene where like he admits he fucked up to Dan. Correct. Yes. Dan kind of like allows it. He permits it to go on. Exactly. Right. Well said, Quinn. Yep. Some notable episodes in this season. This is a very good season. Again, if you've never watched Roseanne, or maybe it's been a long time, uh, there's an episode where Becky farts. And that's just, remember, <laughs> she while she's giving a presentation. But the comedy comes from Becky running home screaming, you know, if anybody calls, tell them I'm dead. I'm quitting Pep Squad. I'm quitting school. I'm never going back again. If anybody calls me, tell them I'm dead. Well, it must be serious. She's not taking phone calls. <laughs> And then Darlene telling the story is hilarious. Yes. Oh, my God. Just as she completes the line, I'd like to thank the student council for allowing me to speak my mind. It happened. What happened? Becky cut the cheese. (laughs) So that's a great episode. Uh, There's also one, kind of a comedy drama episode, where Roseanne almost gets a job but then she finds out after she's hired that she has to use the computer and she doesn't know how to use a computer right and this was a real thing going on in america at the time exactly yes think about that people they were young people they weren't people who couldn't work but the they were just at the right age they were born at the right time in this technology boom yep and they were being like edged out of jobs in the prime of their lives. Correct. Because this new thing came along. Yep. Right. So that's a good episode because yeah. that, it really shines a good light on that. One of my personal favorites from this season is the one where it's called Dead Poet Society, where Roseanne is nagging Darlene to write this poem, or she had already written the poem. She's nagging Darlene to read it at this cultural festival. And everyone expects, because we've seen Roseanne go through her old writings. The expected ending is that, all right, we're going to get to it, Darlene's going to read it, and it's going to be that she stole one of Roseanne's. But it's not. To whom it concerns, Darlene's great with a ball, but guys don't watch tomboys when they're cruising the hall. To whom it concerns, I just turned 13, too short to be quarterback, too plain to be queen. It's a great episode. Uh, There's also, very famously, uh, and it's funny, where Becky gets drunk. (laughs) They're just making alcohol, and then um, Dan and Roseanne are realistic about it. All right, Becky, what happened here? And try telling the truth this time. Look, it was no big deal. We had a couple of tornadoes. Oh, it's no big deal. How come you lied? Who made? I made. I want to know right now. Is this a new thing or a regular thing? I've never done it before. Is that the truth? Yes! What is the problem? You guys drink all the time! First of all, we don't drink all the time. Second of all, we're not talking about us! I'm glad you brought up one of these episodes because this happens a lot. Yes. To me, a lot of shows, while they do it, I feel like they never do it realistically when the parents are debating how to approach a situation. It's too cut and dried usually, right? A lot of times in Roseanne, there some of the rationale is legitimate and it's not the oh we gotta you know we gotta be good parents and that's what they do it's it's interesting it's very interesting yeah and also i love the acting i love the way uh lacey goranson plays hungover yeah and plays drunk it's it is very funny and darlene takes care of her even Mm -hmm. though she's like mad that becky got drunk it's really well done check that one out folks also there's the one where uh Roseanne's working at the fast food place, and her boss is a high schooler. He's 18. Like, he's doing this. This one is great. This is a great one. So he wants to cut overtime, right? Except for this one, like, suck-up kid. And Roseanne needs the extra hours. Right. But he wants her only on the weekends, which she can't do because she has a family, right? But he sucks at shop, and he's got a carburetor that he has to rebuild. So she and- Fantastic. I'm like, you're just you explaining it so good. She swallows her pride. Yep. She invites Brian Kanan, Kamen, I think it is, to their house for dinner. And again, the Connors are hospitable, even though they're all begrudgingly doing this. They are nice right. about it, right? And there's humor to the fact that, you know, he's like Becky's age. Yes. <laughs> Becky thinks he's a dork. Yeah. Brian Kamen is coming here for dinner. Doofy Brian Kamen? No, Mr. Brian Kamen, my boss. So anyway, dinner is what it is, and Dan 
brings him to the garage, helps him rebuild the thing. But he tells he tells Brian here, like, can you not be so hard on my wife? Bottom line is at the end of the episode, Roseanne talks to him in the kitchen and he's like, you know, I hope you understand why, you know, I can't work weekends. He's like, yeah, well, you can't. So then you can pick up your last check or whatever. You can't work weekends. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, there it is. You can pick up your last check on Monday. What? You're fired. What the hell's wrong with you, bub? What the hell's wrong with you? You've been in this house three hours. You couldn't say something about it. Wait, wait Dan wants to kick his ass. No, but there's but he doesn't. There, there's a great fucking thing, and I'll never forget this. Yep. Oh, you don't want to leave without your carburetor and your coil spring. And here's your butterfly valve. <laughs> and don't forget your secondary. <laughs> Brian, would you like fries with that? My favorite episode, I think, from the season is when Ziggy comes to yes, town. Yes, the biker man. Yeah, Dan's old friend from like 20 years There's ago. There's another, also, Dan was a biker. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. It. right, we start to learn that, and he helps Dan fix up his old bike. Well, what do you think it would take to get her going again? Phone call to my old lady saying I'll be another few days. Well, what about work, man? I thought you had to get back to work. Well, that was before I had a bike to rebuild. <laughs> and Roseanne comes out in her old coat from, like, high school and stuff, and it's just, like, a very happy episode. Again, relatable, running into an old friend you haven't seen in a like, while. There's not even, like, conflict in that episode. It's just, like, There's right? really not much. It's, it's really just... They were different when they were younger. Yeah. Uh, another one that's really good is, uh, so Roseanne's working at the salon. She gets rear-ended by Meg Wellman, who is actually the the wife of Wellman. Wellman. Yeah. Yes, the Wellman. And that's just a funny one because Roseanne and Dan want to sue, but their lawyer, who is Stephen Root, who you might know from Office Space, you know, Red Stapler, um, <laughs> he sucks, and he knows that yeah. he sucks, and they can't compete with Meg Wellman, so they just take the money that she offered. It's, right. a, it's a funny episode. And the season ends with Roseanne getting, as a birthday present, a little writing room in Which the basement. Which will become very important later on. That's Joe. right. Very important. Very important. Uh, my own dungeon. <laughs> it's an office. So you can write. Oh, my own office. You like it? It's my own office. For all the efforts of season two of Roseanne, it ended as number one. It deserves it. For the eighty nine ninety season. Season two is like, to me, it's almost like, I know this might sound weird, but to me that feels like the first real season. It's more developed. It's more what Roseanne was for a few years. Yeah, I'll give you yeah. that. So we move into season three, and I've got big news, everyone. We got a revamped version of the theme song, a little more brassier, a little more in your face. And thus starts the tradition. <laughs> yes. And not only that, this time all the, it's all reshot. They're playing cards now. Right. So instead of just screwing around, now they're playing a card game. Which, honestly, that happens way more often in that show anyway. Yeah. It's more accurate. <laughs> a lot of cards. Yeah. We open the season with Roseanne thinking she might be pregnant, and the whole episode is the family waiting for the test to right. come through, and them kind of deciding, like, do we want a kid? Do we? Yeah, is this something we want? We right. like, can barely afford anything. Right. Towards the end of the episode, everyone's getting excited, and... The test is negative. Uh, I'll talk to you later, sis. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Yeah, well, that's what I do best. <laughs> Roseanne does get a new job. She leaves the salon. She gets a job. Uh, there's a department store called Rod Bell's in their local mall, and Rod Bell's has a luncheonette. Okay, this job, I feel, and you'll probably correct me, but I feel like Roseanne had this job for at least two seasons, but I could be mistaken. She has it for all of this season and all of next season. Okay, yes. Yes, because this... And, and there's a very notable reason why I believe that. The uniform. The uniform. Roseanne has this goofy, like, it's you like know. 1950s 1950s apron. luncheonette, old-style diner, diner yeah. that, that the ladies have to wear. And she hates it. But her co-worker is awesome, that lady. Bonnie the, Sheridan. Bonnie. Yeah, yeah, she's good. I like her. She becomes, like, one of Roseanne's closer friends yeah. as the show goes on. Bonnie, and, you might know as uh, one half of the musical duo, Delaney and Bonnie. Who cares? We meet somebody. We meet a new character, the boss. The manager. Leon. Leon. Now, Leon Martin is- Martin Mole. Martin Mole. 
Leon, <laughs> he becomes a character for the entire rest of the series. Yeah, like, Leon's amazing. What a fucking weird like thing. Leon, like, well, Martin Mull, Leon Carp is his name. He can match Roseanne in the sarcasm department. So, okay, what Leon is, is he's like a highfalutin version of Roseanne. Yeah. But they're both very funny with each other Their as a bickering duo is because you know Roseanne will throw one at Leon and Leon will throw one right back. Yep, and, exactly. And, it, and it's like a almost begrudging respect. Oh no, we're in the middle of a big weekend sale and I have you on the schedule. I told you about this weeks ago. No, ma'am. I wasn't here weeks ago. <laughs> well, I told some guy in a suit. <laughs> That suit doesn't work here anymore, and he didn't take care of it. No, you are working tomorrow. They have a contentious relationship. He's just treated as like a caricature, like just some rival, like Newman or something. Yeah, I guess he is. You know what I mean? Like he, it isn't till the end that they like endear him to them. I guess you're right. He is kind of Newman-y, right? Yeah. In a in a show that could get a little too serious at times, Leon is very comic relief. Not in an unrealistic way either. Yeah. He's realistic enough that he's not too sitcom y. Right. That makes sense. Yes. So we get to meet Leon. Also, Jackie gets injured on the force. It's like a comedic injury because they always are in sitcoms yep. when a cop gets in. It always is. Robert, everybody loves Jeremy, got Gordon the ass. Right. It's always something dumb. This time she was chasing a naked man yeah. and thought she grabbed his gun, but it was his dick and she fell down the stairs or whatever. Hurt her back. Had to retire from the, the force, the force. As, as Jackie will say, for years to come. Yeah. But this was too much for Gary, who was already not happy about her being a cop. She and Gary are no more okay. in this season. Ed and Crystal get married, which Dan mm. hates at first, right? right? Dan cannot fucking stand this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm glad you're good with this, son, because we're getting married. That's it. Where are you going? Somewhere else. Dan! Oh, and also, they're pregnant. <sighs> this was weird. Very weird. But most notably this season we get our first meeting with a character named mark healy so he is played by glenn quinn who was an irish actor that really hadn't done too much before this but he would go on to uh, be a character in angel we were just wondering how'd you get in here through the door <clears throat> no i mean uh, you're only 18 right look man i got a piece of paper here that says i'm 21 well how old are you when you're dating our daughter Depends on where we're going. So Mark is introduced as a date for Becky. And of course, the Connors being the Connors want to meet Becky's new date because she's right. going out with him. So he shows up at the door and he's you could tell that this guy is not somebody that Dan or oh, Roseanne no. would like. He just seems like a cretin. Like just like a <laughs> not a good person. No, right? like just not a good person. Rude. Or, or should I say not a good kid? Yeah. Like, you know, like he could grow into a good person, right. but he's just not a good, but from the other side of the tracks kind of thing. But he's not even putting on airs. He's yeah. not even trying to oh, fake no. it, you know? But Becky thinks he is just swooning so over this hot, guy. Yeah. right? They hate him, but that's it. We see him for one episode, and then he resurfaces later in the season. Becky is still going out with him, even though they don't want her to. Notably... He gives Dan's bike a tune-up and steals it with Becky for a ride. Uh-huh. Dan finds out because he knows his bike, but it turns out that Mark actually knows his shit with motorcycles. Right, so this this reveals like a skill. So do they like him? No. no. They don't like yeah. him, but they're a little more tolerant mm-hmm. than they were by the end of the season. But anyway, we also meet the new next-door neighbors, Kathy and Jerry Bowman. Now, they are from Chicago, and Kathy is a very rich, stuck-up lady. I'm not sending DJ over to your house either, because I don't need him picking up any of your attitude. Oh, and just exactly what attitude is that? (laughs) That one right there. And Jerry Bowman's kind of down to earth, and he likes Dan and Roseanne, but Kathy does not like Dan and Roseanne. We get to see their house, and it's literally Roseanne and Dan's house, but like all nice. It's very, very (laughs) funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that part. And a couple of notable people wrote for this season. Amy Sherman Palladino, who would go on to be the creator of Gilmore Girls... And uh, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. See, he's, <laughs> you know, we should we have you noticed a trend here? A lot of the writers on Roseanne eventually were like really yes. This was like the way they got their start. Norm Macdonald wrote for this show of a couple of times. He did. Chuck Lorre also wrote in this season. Now, Chuck Lorre, you might find on some shows such as Sybil, Grace Under Fire, Dharma and Greg, Two and a Half Men, Big Bang yeah. Theory, successful. I well, guess the I guess the point is the writing on Roseanne was on point. 
It was. Yeah. I mean, especially through the first like half of the show. Half- People forget too, Roseanne too was like credited as a writer for some stuff, well, right? Well, she had final approval and yeah. she was obviously the the producer, the executive producer. It seemed she- like a committee almost, the way yeah, I interpreted Roseanne it. Roseanne had the final say. Right. Tom Arnold was involved for the period of time that they were married. Tom Arnold was also involved. Of course he was. He also was a writer. He horned into everything Roseanne yeah, was involved in. Yeah, <laughs> he did. Uh, so some notable developments and things in this season would include a, an episode about PMS, which is funny. The Wedding of Ed and Crystal, like right. we mentioned. There's a fantastic episode called Home Economics or Home Ec, where Roseanne takes uh, Darlene and some of her friends to the grocery store and to the Connor house and basically teaches her what the hell Roseanne does. You got four loads in the laundry and you got a sink full of dishes and your husband gets really, really cranky if he has to wait for his dinner. You got to move, move, move. <laughs> and it's another glimpse into, yes, she's crass. Yes, she's crude. But Roseanne really is good at being a mom, at taking care of her family. She really is like one of the best moms you'd ever meet. Right. Right. Just because she's sarcastic and, you know, loud and obnoxious doesn't yeah. make her bad. It's almost that's almost like a veil of what she really is. Right. I think know? it's really it's a great episode for that right. reason. The one where Mark and Becky steal the bike. Check that one out, folks. That's a really good episode. Mm-hmm. We also meet for the first time and we'll see her again later. Nana Mary, who improbably is like the same age as Bev, even though it's Bev's mom. Ted from Toledo thinks it's mean to kill cows. What does he want us to do? Eat them alive? (laughs) That is very good. I'm going to use that. She's great because she's the antithesis of Bev. Right. And so that that is I almost feel like that's the purpose Nana Mary serves. She's like. She's like Dan if Dan was a woman. Yeah, she like, wears a trucker hat. She wears a trucker she hat. Drinks, she wants to watch football. Yeah, she like, drinks scotch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's great. And Bev fucking hates her. Yep. And it's great because the best part is that Roseanne and Jackie fucking love when Nana Mary's yep. in the same room as Bev because it, they hate Bev. Yeah, well, And to see Jackie Nana does. Mary get yeah. under under Bev's skin, it's great. They, they're they they're like reveling. In yeah. It. Like, they're like, this is amazing. So that's a fun one. She's like Bev's kryptonite. It's great. Yeah. It, it's really funny, too. Shelly Winter, she's great as yeah. Nana Mary. In the season finale of season three, Ziggy returns to uh, Lanford. The, the, the Ziggy. So he has a great idea. He got 20 grand and he wants to invest this into a bike shop. So he takes Dan along with him and they come home and they tell Roseanne and Jackie. And this is a big moment for the family. Yeah. And it's a risk. Yes. Too. They say, we're going to open a bike shop. And Roseanne kind of debates, debates and says, you know what? Do it. Right. And then Ziggy backs out and Dan is crushed. You don't come blowing in here, getting everybody crazy. You don't start something you're not going to finish. Well, that's why I'm not starting this. Fine. Dan, hey, Dan, come on. Man, Dan, I'm sorry. Listen, but we, we could have gone under in six months, and you lose the house and the drywall deal, and it was my idea, man. I mean, you guys would have hated me forever. This way, hey, you hate me for a couple of months, and I'm back by Christmas. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Then the next day, Ziggy's gone, but there's an envelope taped to the refrigerator that Darlene finds. Ziggy gave Dan the money to do it himself. Unbelievable. True Ziggy friend. Was, Ziggy was a true friend. True yeah. friend. He didn't screw Dan over. No, he didn't. Because of Dan, he didn't want to be responsible. He didn't want to let Dan down. Yep. Also notable is Brad Garrett from Everybody Loves Raymond is the banker in this one. <laughs> Doug the banker. <laughs> well, you know, from what you told me on the phone, I think it sounds real promising. I'm <laughs> just saying that. Doug. Anyway, this uh, season three, another excellent season, ended the ratings at number three. Still very good. But I'll say this about season three. It's a lot of, like, table setting. A lot of table setting for the next two. Yes. Yes. The so, next two might be, like, the best. Uh, yeah, might be right here. Yeah. Uh, season four is excellent. So this is the 1991-92 season. Same theme, same intro as the season right. before, for those of you keeping track. Dan and Roseanne, by proxy, open the Lanford Custom Cycle. Yes. Dan's motorcycle shop, uh, which focuses on restoring and selling, then, old motorcycles. There's a lot of good scenes this season of Roseanne visiting Dan at the shop. and Yeah, it plays a part. Yeah, goofing around and stuff, and, and, and talking about serious things, too. Like The shop becomes like a little mini set. It does. Yeah. And speaking of table setting, we mentioned last season, Mark knowing how to work on bikes. Dan hires him as his mechanic. Yeah, so this, this becomes becomes a very important development for this season. Now, Dan starts to kind of like him, but again, they're not... Thr- like, if Becky broke up with him tomorrow, they'd be fine. It's that right. type of thing. I am Becky's father. By definition, therefore, not your friend. Secondly, I am your boss, which still makes me not your friend. 
Uh, Jackie changes jobs again and becomes a truck driver. <laughs> which is such a Jackie job. Very Jackie. I like it, though, because it doesn't have to factor into the show much. Like, you never see her in no, her truck. No, You know, like, it's just mentioned. Pretty sure she goes on a weird rants about big rigs and she did, doing, yeah. doing stupid shit. Like, I was hauling a load, you know, through Elgin or whatever. This is, this is like the Jackie trait is that she'll always, like, brag about her job. Yep. And it, it, she just sounds like an idiot. Yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also meet for the first time. Mark's younger brother, David, uh, who was called Kevin in his first episode for reasons we don't need to get into. <laughs> Kevin who? Kevin Healy, a Mark's brother. What are you doing here? Mark and Becky went out, so they're paying me to watch Steej until they get back. <laughs> oh, and where is Steej? David is played by Johnny Galecki, who would go on, I guess, most notably to star in a show that I don't like, The Big Bang Theory. Right. But I mean, a big, probably, I don't know what what was a bigger uh, royalty for fucking Seriously, Dan Galecki, man. Roseanne or, or uh, that Big uh, Bang? Big Bang, yeah. King of syndication over here. Yeah. God, but... Uh, that guy doesn't have to work a day in his life anymore. No, he doesn't have in, to. In two huge shows. <laughs> right. Like, Brush my teeth, feed the hog, still got some homework to do. We'll get more into David, but basically the crux of him is he's not like Mark, even though he's his brother. He's, he's the polar opposite. Yeah. He's shy. He's, he's kind nice. of a geek. Yeah. Like he likes he, to draw. He's sensitive. Yeah. And he likes Darlene. Uh huh. Very interesting. Which is, again, a juxtap- juxtaposition to what Darlene is Correct. rough and yep. tough. We, you know who else we meet? She was only mentioned in season three by Arnie. We meet Nancy, which is uh, Sandra Bernhard. Yes. <laughs> Another character that the, the revolving like third amigo yes. of, of the Jackie Roseanne uh, squad. Sandra Bernhard in her own right as an actress is a complete enigma. And I love her because she's so, she's so weird. She's so fucking weird. But she's funny. She works in this show. She works. Like, she absolutely seems like somebody that lives in that fucking town. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? Like she, She's so kooky and yeah. I love her. It's official. I'm settling for Arnie. <laughs> and we're getting hitched, and we wanted you guys to be the first to know. I She's like supposed her. to be the single, like, bohemian wacko person, like, you know? Like, yes, and she was until she got engaged to Arnie, and they get married, so. Uh, Why would you marry Arnie? I, don't they ask the same question? Yeah, no one likes, literally nobody likes Arnie. I just yeah. want to be clear about this. Like, I almost I almost remember a reaction from Jackie and Roseanne, like, what the fuck? Arnie? Like, yeah, Arnie, <laughs> why? Uh, one notable thing for one night only, Booker returns at the Halloween episode. Oh, yes. Yeah. Trick or treat. Booker? I got your call. Damn it, I thought it was somebody good. The late return of yeah, Booker. Yeah, like the 90s return of Booker. It's like practically like heading into like, I'm going to be a big superstar mode. <laughs> Headed into medical school. Yeah. And this is the season where Darlene, previously a tomboy, very sporty, friends with her dad, quits the basketball team in mm-hmm. high school. And she starts acting very sullen, very depressed, very gothy. She starts becoming Nirvana looking flannel Yeah, a lot jeans. of flannel and jeans, yeah. right? Like always. Her hair is like all just grown down long and does, hair is it's awesome. all like it's a mess. It just she doesn't give a shit. I love it. Are you doing drugs, Darlene? No. Would you tell me if you were? If I was, no, I wouldn't tell you. But since I'm not, the answer is no. You know what's interesting about this, though? Because she had just started high school, right? right. She's 14 in ninth grade here. Either if most of you folks, I would wager, either you know someone or you were the person where when you hit that middle teen period, like after 13, 14, 15... You Just did change. Switch. Yeah. Just a flip of the switch. Right. Or maybe you know somebody that did this. It's realistic. It's extremely realistic. Yeah. Besides, I didn't ask for your help. You just felt sorry for me, and I don't need your damn pity. Are you kidding? You're begging for it. Oh, high school's too hard. My friends don't like me. Nobody understands me. Well, then do something about it, you little wimp. Shut up, Becky. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, of course not. Because you're so complex, you're so deep. Well, that's crap. Al and Bev Harris split up, and this is where we never see Al again, Roseanne and Jackie's dad, but this is where we start to find out, because in the first season, he seems like this like lovable old man. Right. We start to find out that he was actually like an abusive dad, and that becomes a thread that runs throughout Roseanne and Jackie's yeah, characters. Yeah, we start to have these weird like memories. Like They don't show them, but like, no, no. They'll, they'll they be, talk about them. There'll be episodes where like Roseanne and Jackie, and sometimes Dan's there, and they'll vent yep. about what went down and like they felt like they needed to repress these memories and think yeah. of that think of them a different way and yep. like how it really fucked them up. This is also the season those where those are such realistic episodes. They are. Oh absolutely. my those episodes like hurt. 
they're very raw and real. Because these things really happen to people. Yeah. This is also the season where Bev starts to become more and more annoying. Like, yeah. intentionally. They're writing her more annoying. Yeah. And Jackie cranks up her resentment of Bev to, like, 11 at this <laughs> point. Like, Roseanne starts to become more sympathetic about it. You know, I know some people might not like it. I love it. I think it's... I, it's okay. It, it, it's necessary as far as comedy with some of the deep I, shit going I on guess. with their parents. I guess right. <laughs> You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's, it's needed. And when you consider Jackie's life, yeah, you know what I mean? Still yeah. single, still trying to find yes, the right job. and we're slowly... Are we, are we officially in the territory of, like, Jackie's kind of a loser? Like, We're getting there, yeah. yeah I'd like, say this is the the first real season where that starts to come into play. Because it, before it seemed like Jackie had a bright future from the beginning Jackie of the show. Jackie was the grounded one that was smart and, and sharp she was and with it, yeah, too, and, and stuff like you know, like it, it seemed like Jackie, you know, she's dating fucking George Clooney and shit, <laughs> like you know, like yes. what, what's going on here, right? But she's starting to become a, a little bit neurotic. Now, Kathy and Jerry Bowman they move back to Chicago, so the next house over is empty for a period of time, and. Rod Bell's luncheonette closes. Well, here's to the last day. We're not out in the parking lot watching the place burn, but this is nice, too. <laughs> to Rod Bell's luncheonette. Where the food speaks for itself <laughs> all night long. Which means Roseanne does not have a job. And guess what? The bike shop isn't doing well. Uh-oh. This whole season, and I like the way they play this, it was never really that successful, right. the bike shop. It, it was like, kind of empty. Yeah, they occasionally would sell a bike, and it helped like a little bit, but it wasn't. It, it act like that was going to change their life, right. selling one bike, and that's how yeah. dire straits they were in. Yeah, but it really wasn't doing well. Didn't they emphasize a lot of like bill skipping and stuff in this season? Yes, too? and it's sprinkled throughout the season. It's right. not like all of a sudden the it's writers... It's not one are, whole episode right. about the bills. It's, <laughs> right. always, it's always like Roseanne's on the phone and, and then the kids are taking turns like lying to the bill collectors yeah. and stuff. The, like, DJ does do that. Yeah. It's very funny, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, some other notable episodes this season. It opens with Becky asking for birth control. Which is a great scene with Jackie standing behind Becky, and <laughs> isn't it great, Roseanne? Yeah. It's just an awesome scene. Oh, the isn't it great, Roseanne? Yeah, I like that, great, the, Roseanne? the gritting the teeth. That it's time f- for me to um, get some birth control. Isn't it great, Roseanne? (laughs) Becky has such a wonderful, progressive, open-minded mom that she can talk to about that. Trying to talk Roseanne off the cliff while she's parenting. (laughs) It's so good. Yeah. Very good. Obviously, Becky and Mark having sex. They already had been before the birth control, which Becky tells Roseanne again. People do that. Yes. Jackie accidentally sleeps with Arnie. Yeah. Which you don't want to do. Why would <laughs> you want to sleep like with Arnie? That seems like such a throwaway what the fuck. Like, drunken, uh, yeah. drunken mistake. Arnie and Nancy do get married in Vegas. We see that. Roseanne smokes for a period of time due to all the stress. That's like a plot point oh, episode. Yeah, they, they just all of a sudden throw that out there. Roseanne yep. used to smoke cigarettes. And like, now she's doing it again. Yeah. Roseanne gets a breast reduction featuring a bizarre dream sequence with Doogie Hauser. I don't know if you remember that one. It's weird. There's an episode where Becky and Mark have broken up. Uh, for a period of time and Becky dates Dean the transitional guy who's like a football player and yeah. nice and Dan loves him <laughs> and of course no shot Mark gets back together with Becky there's an excellent Mother's Day episode where Roseanne just wants to be with her two daughters and they are only with her because they want permission to go to a concert in Iowa I think it is by themselves and when Roseanne finds that out she off screen cries and Dan gives this monologue to the girls Okay, we'll apologize to her before she, like, explodes. <laughs> She's not going to, like, explode. She's too busy crying her eyes out. I'm the one you got to worry about. Because I'm very angry, and I don't like you very much right now. Oh, so now we're also supposed to apologize to you? Shut up. So I don't have to say it again in a minute. You shut up, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys just don't get it. You see, she thought you were actually going to do something nice for her. You know, like you cared. And that would have been the very best thing you could have done for her today. But you just ruined it. It's an 
excellent scene with John Good. John Goodman just kills it in these types Good of Lord, scenes. Is he the just the best thing ever? Like he's great at comedy, but when it, when it comes to drama, yeah. John Goodman kills it. He's just it's stuff like this where it really starts to shine. Right. Yeah. Like I feel like he's like scolding me when I'm right, watching right, him. Right. He's scary. He's uh-huh. intimidating. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And Arnie also uh, leaves Nancy and says that he was abducted by aliens. That'll come into play again. <sighs> Arnie is like <laughs> this weird like question mark in, at this point in the show. He's so ass in yeah, this show. I, he, you just, like, right when you have, like, you just talk about this great Mother's Day episode, yeah. oh yeah, and Arnie like got abducted <laughs> yeah. by aliens or it's something. Real. Like, what the fuck? So, uh, as season four came to a close, it was at number two in the ratings. Deservedly so. Another great season of Roseanne. So, we have been about a little less than halfway through the run here. And again, we this is a deep dive. We're Not not every episode we do every week is going to be like this. Right. We're just saying, this is a TV deep dive. So, if you're interested in Roseanne, we hope you're enjoying this so far. If you're still listening and you're not interested in Roseanne, well, thank you for liking us, I guess. Yeah. You know, we appreciate you guys. We got more seasons to go over, though, because the show is still peaking here. Number two, a very good spot to be in. But do all good things last? We're going to have to find out on the other side of this break with more Acid Washed Memories. So my husband says to me, Roseanne, you've been working real hard. How about if we take the kids out for pan pizza and you can eat at the salad bar? So I says, well, what a great idea, honey. While you and the kids are eating a hot, steamy, cheesy pizza, I can be off in the corner grazing on a delightful array of sprouts and garbanzo beans. Get real. Can I help you? Maybe. You see, I'm into running, tennis and basketball, soccer, baseball, racquetball, hurdling, and I need shoes. I want to look at Adidas, Brooks, Tiger, Puma, Nike, Converse, K-Swiss, Tree Torn, Saucony, New Balance, Superga, Mitre, Deodora, and Pony. What size? Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store. Nothing in the world is more rewarding than motherhood. You teach, you love, you care, you nurture, and you watch them grow stronger, healthier, and more lovely every day. Excuse me. How many times do I have to tell you no fighting in the house? Anyway, the best part about raising a family is that your husband's always there, day in, day out. Oh, he's more than just my partner and my lover. He's my soulmate. And now we return to more Acid Washed Memories. And welcome back to Acid Washed Memories here, a retro pop culture celebration. We're talking about Roseanne, Joe Murata, and Michael Quinn. Hi. Hope you guys have liked this so far. Uh, we sure have. I mean, we love this show. I hope that our love of it is shining through right. and maybe you might check it out. Yeah. I mean, we would love to do an episode by episode breakdown, but I'm, this is not possible. This no. would be a very long show. So we're trying to hit some points for you here. And uh, obviously you can score some points if you tweet at us on Twitter at AWM Podcast. Follow us there and join our Facebook group. And please leave a review if you like what you hear. But we got more ground to cover. So we left off with season four. The bike shop not doing well. Rod Bell's luncheonette has closed, right? Mm-hmm. So season five starts, and I want to mention we got a new theme. Uh, the music changed a bit, and you, you know how Roseanne new <laughs> yes, themes are. Yes, a little different instrumentation, and they're eating pizza. The pizza, this this the pizza is, one. This is like the signature one where Roseanne's a little thinner and her hair's longer. Yep, they're all in general more mid nineties y. Yeah, it's like, getting mid nineties y. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, so to start the season, guess what? Dan's got to close the bike shop. Aww. they can't pay the loan. They haven't paid the loan. They had taken out a second mortgage right. at one point. Can't do it. No income. So now what? You poured a gasoline. I like to match. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, damn. Mark gets offered a job because remember, he was working for Dan. So his job is gone. He gets offered a job in Minneapolis, paying three times what he was making with Dan. And Becky tells him, don't go. So he says, okay, I won't. And, mm-hmm. and again, that shows he does care about her. Right. We're starting to seep in that, you know, Mark seems like an asshole, but he kind of 
really gives a shit about Becky. He like, does. He's, he's not like some. He's not using her for sex. Yeah, it's the, it's the main not, point. He, she's not some throwaway girlfriend to him. Right. He right? actually does like her. Like there might be a future here. Correct. So he says he won't go. Now Becky finds out. This is a dramatic scene. Becky finds out that they're closing the bike shop. Right, Dan. Yeah. They have a family meeting. Oh my meeting. god, this fucking scene. It'll be dropped in for you folks that yeah. have never seen this. And she flips out about her college, about her future. And then she blames everything on Dan. Do you have any idea what we're going through? Do you have any idea what I'm going through? I mean, today may be the last day I'll ever see Mark again, okay? Whoa, what are you talking about? He got a job offer in Minneapolis, and I'm telling him to take it. And it's all because of you. Excuse me? If you knew how to run a business, he'd still have a job and he wouldn't be leaving. No, I don't have Mark. I don't have college. I don't have anything. You blew it, Dad. You blew it for everyone in this family. Becky, you shut up. Come on, Mother. You know it. Everybody knows it. I'm the only one with the guts to say it. To me, John Goodman is unbelievable here because he doesn't yell at her. He doesn't say anything. He just sits there and he takes it. Yep. He does blame himself. On top of it, there is a, a harsh realism to Becky's reaction. Yep. While you can say, what an asshole. At the same time, you can also say, like, this is a young girl. She doesn't really know the realities of life and stuff. And all she th- thinks is, like, I have a bright future. And that's really all she knows. 17 going on 18. Right. Worked and, her ass and, off. And she feels like it's slipping through her fingers. Yep. And her re- reaction is very realistic. Extremely. Extremely. And her boyfriend <laughs> is lost his job because of Dan. Yep. Ugh. It's like quintessential, like, oh my God, the writing and acting in this is so fucking good. An awesome scene. At the end of the episode, Dan takes a phone call. Minnesota. What's she doing in Minnesota? What's going on? Well, what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean you got married? Give me that phone. Whoa. Becky! Becky and Mark have run away and they've gotten married. This whole everything. This is like one of the moments to me that made Roseanne. This whole thing. The, the bike shop closing... Mark, and then they're married. Yeah. This leads to a series of events where it's one of the best parenting conversations I've ever fucking seen on TV with Roseanne and Dan. I got a choice. I go upstairs and put his head through a wall. Dan. Okay, I got another choice. She's 17 years old. I throw the punk out and we get this thing annulled. Yeah, and then in two months on her 18th birthday, she goes and does the exact same thing again. Only this time she hates us and then we don't see her no more. So that's your brilliant plan? We do nothing? Yeah, yeah, that is my plan. Because this way, at least we get birthdays, we get holidays, maybe we get a phone call once in a while. But you go up there and you do something stupid, Dan, and we will lose her. (laughs) No, I wouldn't want to go up there and do something stupid because God knows she sure didn't. You know what's going to happen? She's going to get pregnant. She's going to forget all about school. This is it. This is her life. What do you want to happen, Dan? You're screaming at me, okay? You're walking around here like some psycho. What exactly is it that you want to happen? I want my bike shop back. I want my daughter back. I want things back the way they were before I screwed everything up. Oh, my God. Like, it's so real. It's real. Hello? Hey, Beck. Dad? Yeah, it's me. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm okay. It's good to hear your voice. Yeah, it's good to hear your voice, too. Also, uh, right around this time, no income means no electric bill. Mm -hmm. And there's this famous episode where the power gets cut off. Now, you've never seen this in a sitcom. (laughs) Yeah. Like, they literally, uh, the Roseanne's got a great line. Well, I better turn up the fridge. Well, middle class was fun. (laughs) Yeah, that's a a good one. Great line. And obviously, they get it back on. Jackie pays the bill Mm -hmm. for them. They get their electric restored. But it is a very funny episode. Yeah. Uh, Also, Nancy comes out as a lesbian, which, again, this is a big deal in 1992. Roseanne was doing some groundbreaking shit as far as, like, sitcoms was concerned. But I was like... Huh, they're, they're, these writers are willing to like go anywhere and, right. and treat Lanford as a town with other people that are right. different. Like Leon and, was gay. I, yeah. We didn't mention that. Leon's gay. And it's not a major plot point. It's just something that's known. That's yeah, all. It's just known. Mm-hmm. And again, it's just 
to me, that that was more character about the town. Yeah. And that, that I liked, like, just building the town is like, yeah, there's people in here in, of all different walks of life. Right. Like, and that's just the way it is. Just like, n- nicely done, right? Yeah. Uh, we get to meet the new next door neighbors that have taken the Bowman's house. It is a single dad by the name of Ty Tilden, kind of like a Dan's age, you know, nice guy, mm-hmm. wears denim. And his two daughters, Molly, who is the younger promiscuous one, played mm-hmm. by Daniel Harris, who was uh, in a lot of horror movies and things in the yeah. 90s. And her older sister, Charlotte, who is kind of timid and shy yeah. and very nice. They play minor factors throughout the season. We don't need to get into all of that. But what are the big deals here? The big turning point in this season from a job point of view is Bev gets money. Yes. What does she inherit? She inherits something. It's not an uh, inheritance. It's a settlement from the divorce. Okay. Bev gets money. She gives $10,000 to Roseanne and $10,000 to Jackie. And they're blown away by this. And then Jackie's got an idea. She was hauling a load, of course. <laughs> and she stopped in Iowa at this place that serves loose meat sandwiches. Right. Which is like a sloppy joe, but without the sauce. It's just like the ground meat and a bun and all that. And Jackie's like, why don't we open a place like this? And Roseanne goes back and forth. Dan finally convinces her to do it. Like I mean, the proud you, moment. If you think about it from the character perspective, though, right? Roseanne supported Dan when he wanted to make his decision to start a business. Correct. It's only Dan probably feels it's only right that I, if if Roseanne wants to do it, I say fuck it, go for it. Do right? It. You know, do it. Right? I did it. It's your turn. But they don't have enough money. Now Nancy puts up ten thousand. Mm-hmm. That's thirty thousand. Not enough money. So what happens is they try to get a loan. Right. They don't get a loan, which I don't blame them. They just have their power shut off not that long ago. <laughs> Who the fuck's gonna loan them money, right? And a failed business. Yeah. So Roseanne was on this ramp, but it's meaningless to me. Like, yeah. of course they're not going to lend you no money. No shit, right? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, who puts up the other ten grand? But Bev herself. Yes, and this <laughs> to become a partner. They, they play that for laughs. Of though. course like, they the, do. The moment they reveal it, it's like fuck. We thought yeah. we were. <laughs> yeah. We got this free money from right. Bev, and we're free of her too. We can't get any. And they aren't. Nope. And it's true. It's it's for it's played for laughs. Like Bev is like manipulating them. Yes. Like you know what I mean. Like she's like controlling them somehow. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. So. That's an arc within this season is that they take over this old pizza place. They open what DJ named the lunchbox. Yeah, there's that fun episode where they're just trying to name it. And, yeah. and, and like everyone has a shitty idea and weirdly like DJ. the. Who, by the way, by this point in the show, they keep portraying him as a big idiot. Yeah, he's weird and kind of. He's creepy. Yeah, like, kind of dopey. Yeah. But he but, named it the lunchbox. And it, and it sticks. It sticks. So that that's the kind of like the ironic, I guess. Yeah, right? I'd say that's irony right there. Dude, give it a shot. The lunchbox. <laughs> That's pretty good. Another thing that happens is Roseanne, in the beginning of an episode, Dan accidentally knocks the refrigerator door into Roseanne's teeth and knocks a tooth out. It's a plot point that's funnier because while she's working at the lunchbox that day, who walks in but the health inspector of Lanford? Leon. Fucking Leon. And of yeah. course, he makes fun of the missing tooth. Yep. So it's a great moment with yeah. Leon being there. Last time I saw you, you were standing there leaning on the counter, doing nothing but sucking up the oxygen. Boo. <laughs> Deja vu. Well, I see you finally saved up enough for a part. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Something is different here. Have you lost weight? No. You've lost teeth. (laughs) That's a great bit. But Jackie begins a relationship this season with uh, a younger man, and that's played for laughs a lot, you know, uh, named Fisher. Now, Fisher, on the surface, (laughs) like throughout all of his initial appearances, he seems like a nice guy. There's he, even, like, he gets invited to the poker table. He's at the poker, yeah. I mean, he becomes, like, part of the crew. They really, like, they really do a good job of lulling you yeah. into, like, Fisher's just like Booker and all them. And Gary. Right? And Gary, like, he's, yeah. he's and he might be the one, right? right? It's like all this, right? Jackie You're like, loves him. Yeah, everyone's kind of like, this seems like it. And they, they really harp on, like, this seems like it, right? They really play it up. And then, in the middle of the season... Darlene discovers bruises on Jackie's back by a series of circumstances. Close the door. Close the door. And rather than being snarky or funny about any of it, Darlene very seriously goes to tell Roseanne about it. No, I mean, was she like in an accident or something? No. Why? 
I saw her upstairs and her back's all bruised up. So Roseanne goes to Jackie, sees it, right? And finally gets the... Now, Laurie Metcalf is unbelievable in this scene. Hey, shut up! You don't know the whole story! He's been under a lot of pressure lately. There's no work. And I told him that he should look for a job at a bigger company. And he told me that I didn't believe in him. And he told me a million times when he gets in a mood like that that I should just walk away. And I didn't. I just kept pushing him and pushing him. Don't say any more. Finally, she just breaks down and cries in Roseanne's arms. And then who walks out into the kitchen but Dan. And Dan's like, what happened? And Roseanne tells Dan. And then Roseanne walks Jackie out of the scene, right? So then Dan stands there, ponders for a second, and what happens? He grabs his coat. (laughs) When I saw this as a kid, because I knew beer hat and like all all this uh, and and all this all this like subtle like over the years watching Roseanne that that Dan could really kick the shit out of someone, Right. right? Yes. I was like, Oh no! <laughs> like this guy's fucked. Yep. Like it's like, and lo and behold, lo and behold, we find out Dan comes back with his hands swollen. He's putting like ice on yeah, it and yeah. stuff. God, you didn't kill him and then go buy chicken, did you? No, I bought the chicken first. And then the cops come over. One of them, of course, knows Roseanne is very like, "Hey, Rosie," you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And he's being very nice about it. the other cop is just normal. And they cuff Dan. Yeah, Dan's kind of like, just take me away. Like, he knows. He takes responsibility. He doesn't bring up why he did it. You can't arrest Dan. He didn't do anything wrong. Jackie came over here. Roseanne, this is about me. It's not about anybody else. Let's leave it at that. Now, there's a tie into this that, without explaining it in detail, but basically, Dan had met the principal of DJ's school for the first time. They thought Dan was dead because he's never at the school, Right. right? So then when Dan's in the back of the cop car... (laughs) <laughs> the car that pulls up next yeah. to him is it's DJ's a, principal, yeah. <laughs> which is just fun. It's just a thing and that goes a, to show you that the that the way they exposed this all this was random. Is that there was like another a whole sto- different there was a whole line. different like happy go lucky sitcom yes. storyline happening behind all of yes. this, right? And they tied it together beautifully. Yeah. How often did this happen on sitcoms in the eighties or nineties? This is like sitcoms. One of the episodes that I will always remember yeah left like a feeling like i have like a feeling when i see like you said dan the coat the like coat. he gets the coat that's and he, an iconic and moment. he just walks into the like laundry room out the back or whatever yep. right and like, like and you it's and implied you know, and you they didn't even need to show you anything else nope. they could have skipped right to the cops yep like you knew exactly what the fuck he did of course you did like as a viewer even as a kid i knew what he did the coat the coat i <laughs> love it because dan is a scary man when yes. you hurt the people that he loves. And he does love Jackie. Yeah. Uh, this season, Lacey Gorenson makes her last appearance for a while in November of 92. In real life, she was going off to college and right. couldn't do the damn show, which you know, sucks. But Yeah, I'm sure Roseanne, the actress, was probably very encouraging of that problem. I would think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, also, Roseanne and Jackie's dad dies. It's sad for them. At the same time, it's weird for them. But the most funny thing to come out of it is that scene where Jackie's on the phone telling some relative that's like half deaf. Oh, yeah. I have some bad news. Dad is not with us anymore. I said, Dad has passed away. He's passed away. Dad is gone. Dad's dead. Great scene. It's amazing. Laurie Metcalf is very a, wacky Jackie. Wacky Jackie. Laurie yeah. Metcalf's an all star in this season. Yeah. Also, there's this weird like Winnebago trip that uh, the Tildens and the Connors take <laughs> to go see a taping of the Jackie Thomas show, which, by the way, is a Tom Arnold actual sitcom. So it's like Arnie is out of university. It's poor. I, I just <laughs> horn. Very Any, horn. Anytime Arnie horns his way into the show, not good. <laughs> Nobody wants that. I know. Just get it out of here. There's also a, a mini arc where like Dan is flipping houses with Tim Curry. You know that big old Victorian on Pine and Central? My contractor dropped out. Absolute wimp. 
this was such a weird thing because he's not anything like Tim Curry. No. Like, at all. Like Other than the accent, he's not. Yeah. This is one of those moments where I realized, I was like, man, Tim Curry's just a fucking great actor. I love like, Tim Curry. It, it's just yeah. like you would, like, if you didn't know who Tim Curry was, you would have just thought he was on this show. It's like, great. It was a little weird that he's British or whatever, yeah. but, like, whatever. <laughs> well, Some whatever. British guy ended up in Lanford. Who gives a it shit, It could right? happen. Uh, now, with Becky gone, Darlene takes up more of the storylines, and so does DJ. But one of the most notable is Darlene and David's continuing relationship, Mm -hmm. which culminates in them going to prom together, believe it or not, near the end of the season. Now, do I remember this correctly, Joe? Yes, sir. But were Roseanne and Dan a little more pensive, I guess you'd say, about this David thing after what happened with Mark? Yes. Yes. And Darlene is very vocal about that in some of the episodes. Right. Because her and David, believe it or not, are extremely responsible for a bu- two kids that... <laughs> yeah, they're not that bad. They're not bad. They don't go out a ton and get in trouble or anything. They work on their comic book most they, of the they, time they and have on, sex, probably. Right, but also, <laughs> it's like... Implied. You know what's weird? This whole time, this whole... Where I'm working on my comic book thing yes. is like something that's just constantly happening for like I feel like, like ever two or three years yeah, or something like, right. <laughs> I'm we're, we're working on our comic book. Well, DJ brings it to school. That's why the principal got involved to begin with. Right, and Dan. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this whole that's like an arc in itself. It we're is, working on our book. comic book, right? And it's implied that there's sex going on and blah blah yeah, blah. Occasionally, again, Dan and Roseanne are like permitting it because it's in their house and they're not and she's not running away basically kind of like yeah, that's kind of what it's implied though they're kind of shell-shocked after the becky thing right is really what it is you mm-hmm. know like especially dan's like never the same ever after mm-hmm. becky leaves the show the he's dan, very not trusting of david all of a sudden right, right? and you he's know? also never as happy as when right things were earlier you ever notice that, that yeah. i don't know if that's on purpose or not but john goodman is like innocence was broken yes he never plays dan as happy as he did before the whole becky thing mm-hmm. it's completely Completely like real. I said, it's one of the most consequential arcs in the yes, entire fucking show. It's real. Now, this very good season ended at number two. Now, I got to say something. The last three of the original run here, I'm going to preface this, Quinn, and we might not have as much detailed notes here because you guys probably have other things to do and listen to. But <laughs> the point here is I do feel like while there's still some great highlights in these last couple of seasons, I think after season seven. I really start to not like the show and because it becomes to me, I'm going to tell you the truth, more sitcom more sacrificing character for the sake of jokes, more unrealistic. And I'll, we'll get into why. I understand but. that. My, my only argument I've always made against that is that the characters have so much establishment by that point. They don't need to explain things anymore. They're, they're a little freer to riff and have some fun. I agree with that, but I just don't like the direction the show right. goes in. It coincides with Roseanne getting more and more uh, assertive in the creative control and inserting... It's it, still funny, though. It's still funny, yeah. yeah. But inserting, um, you know, just anvilicious rants about certain things, there's right. a lot of... It becomes more politically informed from Roseanne's point of That's view. That's true. A lot of things make its way in, but most importantly, season six, uh, the 1993-94 season has a new theme. Yet again, the Chinese food theme. Mm -hmm. This is a a good one, a fun one. And in this season, Darlene goes off to art school in Chicago. Also, Bev sells her shares of the lunchbox finally. Thank the Lord. To Leon! Oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah, remember they're, like, excited about it, and then it's Leon? It's Leon! Yeah. (laughs) So, like, Leon... They traded shitty Bev for (laughs) shitty Leon. (laughs) Anything to keep him in the show, though, right? (laughs) Oh, my God. Like, this... But to me, this is the, the point of no return for now. Leon is is part of them. Yes. Like, it's like, this, this is like, no, Leon is like practically part of the family now. And it becomes less contentious. Like as, as this right. season goes on, it, they become nicer to each other. Little by little. little it takes by little. a while. Yeah. We you start all- to realize Roseanne and Leon are, this is where you start to realize that Roseanne and Leon are very alike. Yeah. They're very similar. Yeah. Uh, we meet Fred for the first time, who is somebody that Dan knows and works with. And now Fred uh, is a very interesting person. Fred is a, a mild mattern man, right, would you yes. say? So Fred, okay, first of all, I'm just going to say it out the boat here. Fred is the one for Jackie. Yeah. But at the same time, Fred is the, like, there's nothing special about him. He just wears flannel. And he's got a goatee. He, he Sometimes he has a goatee. Sometimes he doesn't. Yes. Um, his hair is bad. Very poor. Uh, 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 <laughs> but he, but on the, on the other end, he is like, him and Dan are like thick as thieves. They like each like, other. They yeah. are real friends. They get along really well. Like, Roseanne seems to like him. 
Jackie just doesn't like him at first. Yeah, it's funny. Like, literally everyone around Jackie's like, yo, he's the one. Yeah. Like, he's responsible. He's not yeah. an idiot. He'll support you, yep. blah, blah, blah. What the fuck's the problem? She and just I think doesn't it's, like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, he's boring or whatever. Yeah. I know you didn't want to talk about this before, but I just got to tell you, I had a really nice time the other night. Well, of course you did, Fred. We had sex. But, unfortunately for her, they have a one-night stand and she gets pregnant. Yep. That becomes an arc throughout the show. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Darlene and David break up. And you know what? I think I forgot to mention this the season before. David actually wound up moving in with the Connors because Roseanne went over there to talk to David's mom and uh, found out that she's horrible. She grew up in a house right. like that, she tells Dan. Because of Roseanne's experiences growing up, a light bulb goes off and she says, she gets not only why David is the way he is, but she gets why Mark is the yeah, way he is. Now that now that makes why sense. why are they never home? Right. Like, what what is, why are they like always around here? The mom. She's, She's terrible, terrible. Terrible. It's abusive. implied that she beats up David yes, or something. It is. And, 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 and he doesn't fight back because it's his mom, obviously. And he, and she's verbally abusive also. Yeah, yeah. So he had lived with them. But what happens here is Darlene's gone to school, right? And they do break up or so they say, but then David says that he's gonna go live with his mom who is in another town now mm -hmm. but really he's living with Darlene in Chicago so remember that okay meanwhile Dan gets this great job working for the city of Lanford that's how he knows Fred yep uh, fixing like buses and stuff like that right it's a sweet gig for it's like a good gig. for like a repairman and stuff yeah, yeah exactly finally Mark and Becky come back except this Becky looks a little different this isn't Lisa Gorenson this is all of a sudden it's the girl from Scrubs Elliot from Scrubs yeah, yeah. Sarah Chalk yeah what the fuck I just want to spend some time with my family. What about my friends? I haven't seen them in a year. Well, you should have taped it when they were on America's Most Wanted. <laughs> so what, you're just not going to show up now? You go out without me all the time, Mark. Why should tonight be any different? Now, I just want to say, uh, I don't think I'm alone in saying that Lacey Gorenson is Becky. Yes. Sarah Chalk's characterization of... Uh, I, I, I like her in Scrubs. She's very bad in this show her acting is unconvincing she okay. has no emotional depth at the way Lacey I'm, Gorenson did I'm gonna did. defend her a slightly oh my, here why not not not, not a lot she's not that you're good. absolutely right about that stuff she's prettier maybe is that it, why no 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 I for some reason at first I was like you but I feel like near the end of her run when she's then later replaced back by real Becky yeah she weirdly like grew on me I guess I like she know. wasn't she was just average like i wouldn't say she was poor her characterization is so different than what lacey yeah. Gorenson was doing it she's very sitcom -y. she's very like i you think that's they thought they could get away with that because becky's now a married woman and she's been gone for a while yeah, i think so like, you know i what think I mean? that like, was they're out you know yeah. uh but also mark's characterization starts to shift this season and i don't like it and this is what i mean about i hate this this okay, is good bad. yeah this really bothered me mark goes from being street smart gritty not particularly like a funny character, but a relatable person. Rebel without a cause. Yeah. Right? James Dean. To the idiot trope. Yeah. All of a sudden, he every single thing with Mark is played for a joke that he's in a dumbass. Yeah. Literally everything. To unrealistic levels. To unrealistic levels. Sitcom they, levels. It's it's like a real departure for the show yeah. in general, the way Mark... Mark is almost like he doesn't even belong in the show. Yeah. Like, it's, like, fucking weird. Like, why would you be married to him if he's this dumb, you know? Yeah, I, like, and, like, Roseanne is just treats him like ass, but yet, yes. like, she doesn't... They don't but, hate him anymore. They don't hate him, but, like, it's just like this... It's just so weird. Like, yeah. it's so strange. It's, it's just, like, my annoying son-in-law. Exactly. Like, it's like, he just becomes that. And this is what I mean about this season. Roseanne gets progressively meaner and less humane throughout yeah. these last few years. All of a sudden, all the things that, like, made the show yes. specifically about, like, how Roseanne was, they kind of, like, fade away. Yep. And it just becomes, like... Look at how sarcastic we are. Exactly. Right? You know, like the kernel of sweetness that Roseanne had and the, the yeah. warmth is pretty much gone for the most part. It starts to become more like married with children, honestly. Yeah, it becomes more like a mid 90s snark fest. Yeah. Which I, I don't care for it. I'm going to be honest with you, but there's still some funny episodes in this season six. Roseanne and Dan find weed in the basement. Now, David <laughs> had been living in the basement, right? Right. So they assume it's his. And then they realize, no, it's theirs from yeah. 20 years ago. Uh huh. There's this great scene where they're going to roll it, and Jackie comes, and she's like, what are you doing? And you're doing it all wrong, yeah. and Jackie rolls it for him. <laughs> Jackie gets involved, <laughs> and, and it's just like the old days. 
just like the old days, and it cuts to them in the bathroom. And I love the way they play being high. It's yeah. so funny. DJ. <laughs> DJ. DJ. Did you ever notice how weird that sounds? DJ. Shh. And maintain. <sighs> What do you want, DJ? <laughs> Roseanne finds out first, uh, due to happenstance, that David had been living with Darlene in Chicago. So Roseanne gets David the fuck back to Lanford, right? However, there's she wants... Co- there's cover here, right? Yes, she wants to hide it from Dan. She... Because, okay. She knows Dan's going to freak so, out. So, remember, let's remind the fans at home. Dan is still shell-shocked about the Becky thing. Correct. If he finds out right. that David... Yes, Mark's brother yes is living with Darlene in an apartment in a city somewhere yes he's going to flip the fuck out and and Roseanne I to me this is a huge this is a actually a really good storyline where Roseanne the, tries to hide it the Roseanne backing up David because she knows David's a good kid he just made a mistake you lying little bastard you got 20 minutes to pack up your crap and get out of my house Mrs. Connor will drive you to the bus station I don't want to look at you and then there's a super scary ass dramatic scene yeah. where Darlene's home visiting, right? And she's sleeping in the basement. And Dan brings her down an extra blind. After they have like a nice time, you know, a nice talk. Mm-hmm. They're watching TV together. He comes down. He's bringing her an extra blanket. And who does he see with her but David? Hey, Darlene, I brought you an extra. <laughs> Mr. Connor, I'm sorry. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. What's the matter with you, boy? Can't keep your pants on? Dad, you stop it! I made I'm not it. talking to you, Darlene. Yeah, I can fight my own battles. <laughs> also, remember, we're watching a sitcom. Yes, this is pretty crazy stuff for a sitcom. Yeah. Seriously, uh, just I a- thought David was going to die or something. Right, like that he was going to become a murder mystery show or something. Obviously, Dan does calm down episodes later. Like it takes yeah. a while, but he does calm down. I think down. Roseanne says what I just said that he's not Mark. Yeah, pretty. He much. made a fucking mistake. He's a kid. And but, also, it was Darlene. Like, yeah, Darlene egging it all on. Yeah, it really was Darlene's. It was more Darlene. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So that calms down, and at the end of the season, or some sometime near the end of the season, uh, Fred and Jackie get married after she's already had her baby, baby Andy. Yes, baby Andy. <laughs> baby who, Andy. Who exists, but sort of doesn't. He doesn't matter. Certain point. Yeah, like, literally one of the least important Even in characters. the extension series, he's like not even a thing. He doesn't exist, I don't yeah. think. Uh, now, this season uh, did very well, number four in the Nielsen. So still very, very good, number four. Season seven, and now we're getting into silly territory now, okay. little by little. This one's okay still, but not as good. Same theme as season six. It moved to Wednesdays. It had been on Tuesdays at nine. This is the one where Roseanne gets pregnant. Right. Becky and Mark move to a trailer to fulfill the Connor dream of being trailer trash, apparently. That's yes. like an in-joke about so it. I, by the way, I was a big fan of this because, you know, I, I'll say, and I'll explain Water why. F- purification tablets? No, because Becky who sees herself in a certain way. This was a bit of comeuppance for being hasty with Mark, that she had to face the consequences in real life. I wish it was Lacey Gorenson's Becky, though, facing True. these consequences, True. don't you? True. She'd play it so much better. She would. She was such a good actress. There's in this a whole role. episode where like Becky's now a big fucking loser. Yeah. And like Roseanne has to cheer her up. It's real. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Also Darlene starts dating, while in an open relationship with David, a guy named Jimmy. Danny Masterson, who you might know as Hyde from that 70s show. She's offering you candy, Jimmy. Don't get in the car. (laughs) Ladies, mind if I smoke? Oh, look, Jackie, a smoker. He's like alternate David, basically. Like yeah. they're not that much different. He's got like the similar hairstyle, and was he's this just a was this just a ploy to make David jealous or some shit? I like forget. usually, Darlene was so fucking manipulative with yeah, him. She's like that, also becoming very unlikable. It's annoying. See? She's going I through know. this like I'm telling you. She's going through this phase where she's like a piece of shit. Yes, like, she is a piece of shit. This is becoming a soap opera. Yeah. We're like veering into weird territory. How did with this how show. did Darlene go this route? I know. You know. Uh, also. A notable episode in that DJ refuses to kiss a girl named Gina because of the color of her skin, which Roseanne rebukes. Right. I didn't raise you to be some little bigot. They have a talk with him. They have a talk with him. But I want you to remember Gina, okay? 
Bev turns out to be an alcoholic. I don't blame her. Uh, <laughs> after that everything felt very she went predictable. through. Absolutely. <laughs> Jackie almost has an affair, and uh, Fred decides to uh, leave her. Right. She didn't like Fred that much anyway. This, is like, what, this she whole was like tolerant when, of when Fred, Fred but, left, it was like, oh well, yeah, like <laughs> that's Jackie's reaction. I mean, everyone else is like, God, Jackie, you're such a fucking loser. Yeah. Like he was perfect. Fred was good. Yeah, Fred was good. He was good. I had no issues with Fred. <laughs> he was very I was nice. I was upset when Fred left. Remember, he even got the haircut, like the short hair. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> he tried. He changed. He tried. He was a dad. He, I, he was fantastic. He loved their kid. Yeah, he did. Uh, and then. David and Darlene do officially just get normal back together throughout this. Thank like the no Lord. more this no, Jimmy shit. No more Jimmy manipulating David's stuff. And like, like Roseanne getting involved, trying to like get them back. She's so annoying too. You know what the annoying part is? Roseanne is like David's we we haven't, Yeah, we haven't mentioned this, but past a certain point and Roseanne even like fucking admits it. She's like, I'm your mom now. Yeah, pretty much. Like you don't have a like I'm your mom. And I'm gonna make sure that, you know, if you want to go out with Darlene, that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, she loves him so much. Right. Yeah, it's, it's insane. She had compassion on him. I mean, it's crazy. Like, she really does become, like, his true mother. Yeah, it's, she does. Yeah. Uh, now, this season ends with uh, a tribute to Sherwood Schwartz in the form of a Gilligan's Island-themed episode. Remember this one? Please, no. Where Mark is the professor because, get it, he's an idiot. Yeah. And everyone's a Gilligan's Island character. And Jack, no. Jackie's a skipper. It's not good. I'm not this saying it's good. This is the end of good. season seven. Yes. One thing's for sure. Fixing that hole in the boat of ours is way beyond our technology. Anyway, I'm going to go find some leaves and twigs, build us a dentist's office. <laughs> the next season is not that much better, but there's a, r- a few really good episodes. But I'm starting in, in real time when I was watching this. I'm starting to lose interest in I mean, the show at this point. You can see the point. ratings dwindling. At the end of seven, they're at nine. They at were number at four nine. four previously. Yeah. So season eight, we have another new theme. This is where it's morphing like full-length stand-ups of them, morphing from like younger to older. Okay, yes, this. And uh, what's really cool about this season, though, they moved back to Tuesdays this time, eight, but the best part of the season for me, Lacey Gorenson returns as Becky. It's good. Most of the show. Sarah Chalk plays Becky in a few episodes when Lacey, who was still in school, was unavailable. If I recall when the original Becky shows back up, there's a whole joke. Where the hell have you been? Yeah, there's a whole like, uh, there's a whole moment. Oh yeah, they Uh, wink at it like a ton. Yeah. Here, Dad. That's all I could find. Where in the hell have you been? (laughs) Don't yell at me, Mother. I was getting this. Well, it took you long enough. Seems like you've been gone for three years. <laughs> There's even a bit where they do like a, a parody of the Patty Duke show with like a poor split screen of the two of them. Yeah. Identical Beckys or whatever or mm-hmm. something like that. And there's a bit in the Halloween episode where Becky, which is Lacey, answers the door and it's a mom and her kids and the mom is Sarah Chalk. Right. I Just remember like that. Just a little yeah. wink. You know yeah. what I mean? So they do play upon that. It's mainly Lacey Goranson as Becky in this season, though. Now, Becky's got like weird boy hair. When she returns, well, she had it in '92. Also, remember? Yeah, but it's like extremely exaggerated by this point. It's not. I mean, her, she, she I don't has like, like a bowl cut. I don't like I, the bowl cut. I don't. Where did I'm that come lie. from? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, also, Roseanne had been pregnant for like literally 13 months or something on the show. <laughs> so finally, she has the fucking kid, improbably named Jerry Garcia Connor yes. after Jerry Garcia of The Grateful Dead. Now this kid exists. He sucks. And and, and that's it. Like he, I, I don't know. Stinks. I really can't tell you anything about Jerry Garcia Good. Connor. Even in the uh, like later the extension series, he's like, what the who the fuck is this? I think he works in Alaska. Yeah, they don't they, they never even Alaska. ever talk about yeah. him. Also, this has a, a 50s parody episode, which is notable for one thing in my personal life with Quinn. This is where the phrase by John Goodman, who is portraying like a Ward Cleaver type, mm-hmm. utters the phrase Anderson account a million times. Ah, uh, yes. And that's where Quinn and I, in our other show that we do, um, our Vantage Point Red Wrestling podcast, we have a running joke that if Quinn has to do a lot of work and, and has it's to- the Anderson account. <laughs> yeah. And like misses like a taping of OVP. Yeah. It's that yeah. darn Anderson account. I will say for, for one of the Roseanne themed goofy episodes, I actually like this 50s one because it's just silly. It's it's better than the Gilligan one. Yeah, it's way better than the Gilligan <laughs> one. Aggravating. But this one plays off the fact that Roseanne is just not like these shows. Right. And, Correct. And that's why it works. That's the point. Yeah. Your hat is pushed up. You must have had a rough day at the office. It's that darn Anderson account. 
John Popper from Blues Traveler shows up as an old friend of Dan's named like Stingray or some shit. And Dan's, Just another Ziggy. <laughs> Dan, sing, Dan sings a Sweet Home Chicago with Blues Traveler. <laughs> it's very weird. We also meet for the first time Leon's boyfriend and then husband, Scott, played by Fred Willard. Yes, Fred a- Willard shows up. Now this, you know what? Looking back at it, I kind of like this. Like, oh, I, mean, I, like, I like the two of them. I like the humanizing of Leon because it was about fucking time. There's only so much a, you stink, Roseanne. You stink, Leon, yeah, like that I can take in my life, <laughs> right. right? That's a good point. And Fred Willard's always lovable yeah. in what he does. Man, by this point, Leon is just part of the show. He's like He's not even show. like, he's a rival, sort of. Yeah, like, but he's less. Not, yeah, a lot less. A lot less. Yeah. Dan leaves the city job, starts drywalling again. And they have a Disney World episode because they had to because of ABC. Right. Uh, and, and all of the sitcoms had a Disney yes. episode when they got bought out. Mm-hmm. And Becky is played by Sarah Chalk for that episode, which, <laughs> which is that one. <laughs> leads to a Roseanne saying, yeah, aren't you glad you're here this week? <laughs> Going to Disney World. So that's a funny wink. And then there's an episode to make fun of Disney because they were very resentful that they had to do this, where David works for a company that's similar to Disney and he turns into like a very robotic. Yes. It's we're getting into dumb territory though. They're is the point I'm to trying like, to make. They're starting to. What is this a WB sitcom now? They're weirdly, like it's almost like all the good writers left to go do real things like ER and Probably stuff. Probably got tired of Roseanne. Yeah, and Roseanne had the kind person. Of I mean, played its course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, eight seasons. It's tough to be high quality for that right. long. In all seriousness, and to be fair to Roseanne, she kind of earned her spot of just playing it out. So I guess they could get like episodes for syndication and I shit. Guess, but well, they already already had it after a hundred, but. That doesn't mean I want to watch it. Fine, play it out, but it sucks. Yeah, you know? I guess the more episodes you get, the more syndication money. Well, the more money. syndication money. Right, yeah, so that's a good point. This is, just, this is just accruing shit at this point. Good point. But they do finally bring it back to some grounded, old-school Connor-style shit by the end of the season when we find out Darlene is pregnant. Because of that, she proposes to David. Right. And they do get engaged. This is sweet. I like that. Yeah, all of this was good. We could just get married. <laughs> yeah, right. To who? <laughs> David. You're serious about this, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have the wedding uh, episode. Now, in the wedding episode, everyone is... Uh, it's Sarah Chalk as Becky, by the way, unfortunately. I wish it was... Mm. Yeah. I'm a big Lacey fan, if you haven't I know, noticed. I, I think know. she's tremendous. Don't worry, she comes back in the revival series. She does. Um, this is notable not only, obviously, for Darlene and David getting married outdoors, right? And Roseanne being very much a mom whose daughter is yeah. getting married. Like she just didn't feel like Roseanne to me this whole wedding. Right. They, they, like, where did they get all this money? It's kind of cobbled together. But, they're, but yeah. remember, they're doing better than they were in the earlier That's years. That's true. Like, yeah. Dan's got a good job and had worked for the city, had a pension with the city. I'm and, just saying their wedding is beautiful. Well, and it's it, outside. I mean, yeah, I didn't know. have to pay for the venue. It's in the woods. But it looks nice. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> But Dan, the whole episode is kind of off, you know what I mean? Right, he's yes. kind of sweaty. And as the wedding goes on, he's getting sweatier and more pale. And then at the very end of the episode, it's just him and Roseanne. He tells her, I'm not feeling good. Go, go call somebody. And then he starts falling over. Uh, I really don't feel so good. I'm not kidding. Maybe you should go find a phone and call Dr. Walker. Dan. Call somebody. John Goodman, once again, coming through. That might be the most realistic heart attack ever in sitcom history, and that's a very weird saying to say, but yeah. I mean, there have been others. But he it's just fucking Roseanne, it. man. They do their thing. So there's an episode where it's all in the hospital, and Roseanne, you can see now the vulnerability is back with Roseanne. Like, finally, enough mm. with, like, the fuck you, and fuck you, and I'm in charge of everything. Yeah, yeah. It just got, and Darlene's like, fuck, fuck. It just got yeah. so old. And Becky's never Becky. And right, like, yeah, and Becky's like, come on, Mark. And yeah. I don't know how to think, or yeah. whatever. Oh, and David's, but, like, brooding and And weird. David's like, I just want to have sex and also be a man in a, in a comic book, or whatever. And DJ's just, like, hi. Yeah, I like, like, I like uh, masturbating, or yeah. whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. Now we have like what made the show the show we, is Roseanne we, and Dan caring about each other. We get grounded back to right. Earth here. Because Dan almost died, but he's in the hospital. DJ is the one that saved his life, we hear, because he mm-hmm. gave him CPR until the paramedics arrived. 
And John Goodman, again, just a killer performance in this episode, talking things over with Roseanne, not doing that well, getting better, not feeling great. Roseanne just not wanting her husband to die. Jackie dropping the neuroses and actually being like a supportive sister. All of a sudden taking care of the family and yes, shit. Yes, instead of being like a shriveling, like, I don't know, Roseanne, ha, 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 character that she became. And then pretending to be Mrs. Robinson and with David. And don't bring that up. I always bring it up because it's one of the weirdest endings it. to I an episode ever. episode. Everything will be all right. I've been with him since I was 16 years old. And anyway, Dan's okay. He comes home in the season finale of season eight, but he's got a whole new diet. And Roseanne's very serious about it because she doesn't want, you know, her husband to die. It turns out Dan's been cheating on his diet and Roseanne's pissed about this. And this keeps escalating and escalating to the point where they get into a huge fight. You got an answer for everything, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, why don't you tell me how to clean up this? What else did you call decoration? Okay, I will. <laughs> I want you to pick them all up using your ass and start with the pointy things. You are a controlling... It is a sitcom! It's Can a, I just remind it's you? It's a stellar performance by both actors here. It just heart-wrenching. I thought they were done. Heart-wrenching. Yeah. Cliffhanger of an episode. This season only did number 16 in the ratings. It's because they farted around for the whole Too time. And then, and then this, like, last two episodes are fucking amazing. Yes. <laughs> so we open up season nine with a new theme. This time, instead of the sax or the horns. Now we're it's, talking about rabbits and catching yeah, the hair. Yeah, rabbit and, with a drum. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. John Popper of Blues Trap, yeah. or, you know, Stingray well, or whatever. Because Dan sung with them. Or whatever. <laughs> so now he's, in the- <laughs> now he's in the intro. Yeah. What doesn't kill us is making us stronger. We're gonna last longer than that greatest wall in China. Oh, that rabbit with a drum. Horrible, by the way. So we get that, we get lyrics, we get a harmonica. It's still morphing, but instead of full length, it's like picture frames morphing instead. Yes. And Lacey's- Which is funny because I made fun of that other shows did the picture frames, and then Roseanne goes to the picture frames That's at the end. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah. The trope, yeah, yeah, full circle. Anyway- Roseanne's gone to Jackie's house because Dan, you know, fucking freaked out, destroyed the house. Mm-hmm. He wants her back. But instead, this season sucks my ass <laughs> most of it. And I'm it not, is the weirdest shit I, ever. Quinn likes it for some reason. But the problem is it's not even Roseanne anymore, half of okay, it. So There's like four good episodes. Can I just explain myself? Very briefly. I only like it because of what it is that or what we learn it is later. Yeah. In retrospect, I look at it as just let's let the Roseanne characters do some dumb shit for a I season. I hate it. I don't want to see that. But the characters were so fleshed out. It's I like don't I felt, care. It felt earned Cancel at that the point. Show. Like, Can, end, the, end the show. I instead know. Instead of doing this. I understand you're, you're upset. Now, John Goodman's not there for most of it, which is unfortunate, but it, the reason was that he was off doing the Big Lebowski. Right, which was not <laughs> unfortunate. No. Good thing he did it. And he comes back uh, at various points with the Big Lebowski beard. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, but I think also in real life, he was getting, he didn't want to do this anymore anyway. I mean, the, it's a long look, time, it's Quinn. season nine. For, <laughs> if you're doing a television show that's a sitcom in general, season nine is usually the upper limit. You yeah. pretty much know, unless you're fucking Cheers, and even you're not they moving were, on. What were they, 11? I mean, yeah. once you get to eight, seven, eight, nine, you usually peak around three to five. Yeah. And then after that, it usually goes downhill. Not all shows, but usually. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't want to recap too much of this. There's a lot of fantasy episodes. Then they win the fucking lottery. Yes, the lottery. And then they're on boats and yes. going on safaris or whatever the fuck they're doing. And they write Dan off for a while because he's visiting his mom in a mental hospital in California. Yeah. Right? Jackie so, becomes like a socialite. I hate it's, it. it's insane. Roseanne and Jackie they meet the crew from Ab- Absolutely Fabulous. All that bullshit. Ernest Jim Varney is a prince from Moldavia or whatever, <laughs> right? And prince Carlos yes. or whatever. There's all this fantasy shit. There's Edgar Wellman who's like someone Brolin. I can't remember. Fuck and Roseanne almost has an affair with him. There's the Roseanne-bo episode where she's just Rambo on a train and I saw that live and I was 11. I'm like, what the fuck show am I watching anymore? <laughs> Mom! Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand this season. It okay, stinks. It sucks ass. I hate it. Let's fast forward to the end. All this okay. bad shit happens, right? Dan and Roseanne, this is very important. Dan and Roseanne finally reconcile. Okay. 
And while they're back together, they get a call from Jackie that Darlene is in Darlene is in premature labor and like way premature. Right. Like dangerous. And we go back into serious mode again. Which they're very good at. Yes. Still. They can just flip that shit on. Yeah, they should. So it's kept like it last on. season again. Yes. Although where the season was mediocre, but this season was just complete ass up to this point. This was bad. It yeah. was, seriously. Yeah. The lottery, they changed the house. It was all, I'm just reminding people. They yeah. like redecorate Different the house. It doesn't whatever. feel right anymore. But they keep the blanket. The Afghan, they have yeah. to. <laughs> anyway, we get to the hospital. Precarious situation. But the baby's born. It's still a very, very dangerous situation, though, because mm-hmm. it's so premature. Darlene names it Harris Connor Healy, which is a tribute Perfect. to the Harris side of the family, the Connor, mm-hmm. and obviously her husband, David. The acting in these episodes is fantastic. Stellar. It really is, uh, with David supporting Darlene. Darlene feeling like a failure, and David saying, no, you're not. Maybe I'm being punished for something. Sweetheart, don't do that to yourself. That's ridiculous. Well, I mean, why is it ridiculous? We don't know everything. Maybe there's some unknowable power at work, like some kind of universal force that's punishing me for something that I did. You didn't do anything wrong. Well, I must have, David, because if there's nothing physically wrong with me and I didn't do anything morally wrong, then nothing makes any sense. (laughs) Why do I deserve this? No. No. Look at me. You don't deserve this. David and Darlene are awesome in the last like, couple of episodes. They are. Here. Dan being supportive right. to everyone involved. Roseanne being like grandmotherly and helpful. All of that acting is great. Now, this arc is interrupted by a goofy ass episode about Dan's mom coming home from the hospital and like trying to attack him or something. And it's such a bad episode what? that I forgot that I it don't happened. I don't even remember it's, that it's that happened. Awful. <laughs> we, we veer into like not even WB, UPN territory with that episode. <laughs> Fuck. But then the two-part series finale, this is it, May of 97, called Into That Good Night. We're in the hospital still, and finally Darlene is able to bring the baby home after a lot of drama and a lot of tumult. And we end finding out that Mark and and Becky are pregnant. Mm -hmm. That's mentioned. We don't know what becomes of that, but it's mentioned. And in a great callback to all the wonderful intros of the show, everyone, not just the Connor family, but all the extended characters, Leon, mm-hmm. Scott, Bev, Nancy, yeah. Mark, David, everyone is sitting around eating Chinese food in the kitchen. Amazing. Can Uncle Wong's whip up a lo mein or what? No, 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 that's chow mein. You can tell by the noodles. Yeah, yeah. all Chinese noodles are the same. Oh, Dad, that's ridiculous. Come on, Dad, lo mein noodles are soft, chow mein noodles are good crispy. Thank you. Okay, I'm warning everybody, I am not going to live through another version of that pepperoni sausage debate from last week. I do that they are completely different parts of the cow. Full. All meat, meat byproducts, rodent parts, hair, sawdust, encased in a tube, yeah. or sausage. Yeah. And then Roseanne starts an inner monologue. And you're like, okay, what's going on here? And as she's talking, she starts to say certain things. And you're like, wait, what? She Mm -hmm. says, you know, Leon's not as cool as she really made him to be. Or her mom really isn't gay. By the way, Bev came out as a lesbian at one point in the show. It's a whole thing. Just because for goofs at this point. She's like, but my sister's gay. And we're like, is she talking about Roseanne Barr's real sister? Like, what is she talking about? Jackie? Right. Or is she talking about Jackie? Like, who is this? And then you see Darlene with Mark and David with Becky. And Roseanne's like... I didn't think that was right. I th- thought it had to be the other way around. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? And then all of a sudden, the gut punch of a line. I lost Dan last year when he had his heart attack. And then John that, Goodman's that, gone. Because I was confused at everything, and then that gets said, and then my heart fell out, and I was like, oh, no, this is all fake, and like, and Dan's dead. Dan this is like dead. the worst fucking ending. Yeah. So Roseanne was on her monologue about how much she misses Dan and loves Dan. And she talks about some other things. And then we see her in that writing room. Right. So the fucking right. This was amazing to me as a callback because I was like, wait, the fucking writing room with the table in the corner and everything yep. that Dan built back in like season two or whatever that was. Yeah. She's writing. She's writing and uh, going on and on about just things. And then she walks up the stairs through the kitchen and back into the living room and sits on the couch by herself as the camera pans out. And you see that the house is the same as it always used to be. It wasn't redecorated. They never won the lottery. Right. It was all just bullshit. 
And this finale here, mixed reaction at the time. Some called it brilliant. Some called it almost like a betrayal. To kill Dan Connor, I think, was the main thing. Okay, I'll say, I'll say this, Joe. My feeling on it is that it's twofold. Well, yeah, it sucks that Dan died. It is the end. Of, it was supposed to be the end of the show, right? Yeah. So that's not as consequential when you're not going to watch the fucking show anymore. That's a good point. But that's a good point. The other positive I would say is that season nine was so fucking wacky, awful. I don't know if that was in the cards the whole way through, but whatever it is, at least it just gets rid of all of that. Yeah, they retconned out all the fantasy shit. So none also, of that happened. It was, none of it. In in reality, it was all grounded. It was just depressing, and didn't, Roseanne didn't want to fucking think about it. Correct. Right? Yes. This season did 35 in the ratings, yeah. which should tell you something. But yeah. I mean, that's very Roseanne of an ending. It is. Dan to died. To be fair, it's faithful to the show. It's real. It says all that shit that you want to happen win the lottery, you yeah. get to sail on boats and meet rich people and blah, blah, blah. All that shit. That's not how it fucking is. Yeah. You know? Good point. And oh, for- and, and and you think that the, the, the girls are married to which husband yeah, that they're married, the but it's actually around. the other way around. Yeah, that was weird, though. But for 21 years, that was the ending to Roseanne until in 2018, the reboot happened, and they retconned the retcon, which retconned the most of season nine. They kind of had to, because you can't do Roseanne without John Goodman. I thought you were dead. Sleeping. <laughs> Why does everybody always think I'm dead? They basically said everything in season eight or nine, nine. It didn't fucking happen. The only thing that happened is Harris was born, but they made her younger than she would have been. Right. Like she would have been 21. They basically cherry picked the episodes that mattered in nine that were consequential yeah. to the future. Yes. Like, <laughs> I don't even know if Dan ever even had a heart attack, let alone um, died, you know, like in current is they, that ever referenced? They like joke about it. Like, okay. like remember, remember when you died? Ha ha. Yeah. Like, Why does everyone think I'm dead? Yeah. We don't have a lot of time to talk about the reboot here. Yeah. Good. I'll say this about the reboot: very good. The ten episode season from 2018, I thought was very good. A little hammy. A, a lot little, of ham, Quinn. So I'll say, I'll say bacon this: bacon. Even the show does spend some time saying, "Remember this? Remember that?" Doing yeah. that kind of thing. But there's a lot of cool stuff too about interesting follow-up with Becky and how Mark died. Yeah, because Glenn and, Quinn died in real life. And she became an alcoholic. And, and you start to get the realness of Roseanne comes back in this show. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, stuff that would fit right in there's, with, there's the, a lot of with stuff. the prime of the show. But one of the things that's never really talked about is, you know who DJ married? Yeah, so DJ marries the girl. Gina. Gina. That he wouldn't kiss. That he wouldn't kiss when he was a little boy. Yep, and they have a daughter, Mary. Yes. Named after Nana Mary. Right. Which I really like that touch. Now, Roseanne's old. Dan's old. They and, play up the grandparentness, though. But they, are, but they are like, when we meet up with them, they are elderly. They're not yeah, suppo- they're in their they're mid-60s. Not, they're not supposed to be, you know, they're not trying to portray them as a little younger no, or anything. They're like, in their mid-60s. They just want to be left the fuck alone, but they right, can't. Right, so that's the joke, is they want to be left the fuck alone. They write in this story that David and Darlene have split. And now Darlene's a big loser because she lost her job in the big city because yep. she split with David. And she's got Harris. She's got Harris. And Mark. And Mark. Who's nine. Little Mark. Yeah, he's yeah, nine. He's and nine. Harris is written as like, what, 16 or something? Like yeah. they made her younger. The show is still going on because technically the Connors is part of it. It's a spinoff, yes. Right. Like Harris is already like in college or some shit by the time we're already in, yeah, I mean, in now now right? when as of press time as of press time but, yes. um so it, it's an interesting like I love the first the the Roseanne which the is technically episodes, season yes. ten yes fantastic little show um and I thought it was great follow up unfortunately Roseanne made some remarks yes um, got kicked off the show and they killed her off in season two aka the Connors yes and from there I'll say this. The writing is still good. Peggy Bundy's on the show. <laughs> Actually, great actress to Katie throw Singal, yeah. into the mix. But the irony. The irony, <laughs> yes. The irony. I kind of love everything they're doing with the Connors. I want to say this about it before we go, is that if there is a blueprint for how a revival series, like a continuation series should be, I think it's that. Because before that, they would always try to Oh, the car- the gang's back together and they're all old and blah, blah, blah. But this just threw you just into the lives of the characters at this point in time. It didn't right. try to like, just like, okay, this is a one season, whatever the fuck. And like, right. it's yeah. nice to see everyone. Okay. This, this show does it in such a way where we're just back at the old house and shit happens. 
all of this stuff is treated with the respect and the manner at which Roseanne, the original, not like pre-season nine was written. And that's what I like about it. I do agree with that. I yeah. just think sometimes the performances are a little hammier and, and very <laughs> chewing on the scenery. Anyway, Roseanne in, uh, in general. In general here, I think that the, the set design, the music, the choices that were made for the show were always appropriate. Uh, I think the casting was tremendous. I think the acting really doesn't... Uh, Laurie Metcalf, a lot of people mention when they talk about Roseanne because she won the Emmys and stuff, but John Goodman, but Roseanne herself is tremendous too in this she show. She really is good. Her performances in this show yes. are fantastic. They, they really are. She earned what this show became. I, I do you agree know? with that. Yeah. And as someone that uh, had total creative control, she really did, for the most part, put out something that was really... Barring one season... Yeah, I mean, eight's one, not, no, no, no picnic either, man. <laughs> I know, but it's it, not after, nine. After five, it starts to, yeah. But uh, folks, you've hung in for the long haul here. This uh, deep dive again. If if you're worried, like if you just want us to talk about like food or something, we'll be doing that again soon. Okay, like this, this is <laughs> these deep dives are divergences yes. that are going to not be as common. Yeah, it's not every episode yeah. we're going to talk about a TV show for right. two hours or something, right. folks. But but it was fun. It was fun, and we wanted to kick it off with a show that we both love and know really well. So we hope for those of you that do like Roseanne and did watch Roseanne that we have jog some memories for you maybe encourage you to watch some of the old episodes again. it really is worth looking back on it's a show that so. has aaged tremendously i really do it doesn't seem dated yeah it absolutely does not it's a good other show. than maybe the clothes they're wearing yeah but like, that's fine yeah but it's snappy the writing is just realistic fresh it's just it's a good show and there's so much things we didn't mention so there's plenty yes. of meat on that bone to go back to yeah 100 percent to chew on that bone folks and thank you so much for being with us here if you uh, don't like roseanne and you still listen to all of this then man you must re- you like us you really <laughs> like us and for that we appreciate you be sure to follow us on Twitter at AWM Podcast. You can talk to us there. Tweet at us about Roseanne there or whatever else you want. And you can also join our Facebook group, Acid Wash Memories, on Facebook. But one way or another, we will be back next week for, we promise, something completely different. Until that time, thank you for being with us, and we will see you next week. See ya. Like what you heard? Be sure to leave a review and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. We will see you next week.